of what I was talking about yesterday. You see, Dr. Shirosh in the debate, he mentioned one of the most stupendous feet of Hazrat Isa al Islam, Jesus. And he quoted from John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 13. He quoted, he says, No man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. It, it hasn't happened. The, the ascension had not happened. And <laughs> Peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And this is your brother Christian Prince with you. Uh, today we are going to spank the that as you know usual as we spank them all of them Here is guys you see how Muslims who support this man they are supporting an idiot And it's so obvious that he do not know what he is talking about or he knew but he is an idiot who is playing dumb Isn't it this guy who said that this book written more than 60 years after Jesus and now he is saying Jesus was not in heaven yet when this is written. This is number one stupid mistake. Number two Isn't it Jesus said when he was between the people in earth my kingdom is not in this earth i am from above isn't it jesus said before abraham i am and abraham saw my day so when those fool they claim that they knew the bible either you knew it and now you are being a liar or you do not know it and you are in ignorance. So why you are in the stage? In the top of that, notice here that this fool is a questioning Jesus, not a questioning the one who wrote this, because the one who said this, this is Jesus. If Jesus is the one saying, I am from above, then who are you to question him? And the funny, they say to you, I swear Jesus says, I'm God. Show me one verse where Jesus says, I'm God. Why he is opposing this verse? Because this verse is showing that Jesus is from above. We are just refreshing your memory about what we said in the previous video. So we will go a little bit more. You can watch the previous video and laugh at what this guy said. Now we will go to the second issue he mentioned. From, from his mother's womb. He said he descended from heaven. Who saw him coming down? The nurses and whoever were helping Mary in the stable, they saw this Jesus, this puny little child with all the filth and the muck, which made his mother impure for 40 days according to Jewish law. So if Jesus was born in this earth, how you say that Jesus from above, and this is against the Quran, we show you the verse of the Quran, where it says that the Messiah was the word of God was sent down to Mary, and it is coming from heaven, this word of God. And not only that, he is a spirit from God proceeding from God. And this is in his stupid book, The Yellow Pages of Muhammad. So, when a Muslim he questioned how Jesus is just born of Mary, yet he is coming from heaven, not only he is a questioning Christianity, he is a questioning Islam. And this has shown us that this man is no Muslim, for he is a Muslim and he claimed to be a sheikh. Don't he knew what the Quran says about Jesus? This is the word of their God, Muhammad. The yellow pages of Muhammad, it says that Jesus, the son of Mary, between two brackets, no more than a messenger, no more than, this is not in the Quran, this is addition, a messenger of Allah and his word, which bestowed in Mary. What bestowed mean? In Arabic, we says al qaha which means sent down. So yes, Jesus was sent down. And you are an idiot. When the angel day came to Mary, and not only he is a messenger, a word of God, he is a spirit proceeding from him. And the only one in Islam have the title of the word of God and the spirit of God is Jesus the Christ. Muhammad is not, Adam is not, nobody is. If you ask Muslim actually, why even you are calling him a Christ? You see, one of the stupid things about Islam, they call the Messiah Christ. So why you call him a Christ? Do you know what Christ mean? Here you see that Muhammad is a stupid fool because by calling him a Christ, you just called him that you are God. For this is what a Christ present. 
if he is the savior well who is saving human being except god the name alone is enough to prove the foolishness of muhammad and those who believe in him let us continue with this kid and love more and please don't forget to download the video you can cut it pieces depending on the topic we are talking about like now jesus from above uh, the dad saying uh, how jesus uh, say this you, you know be creative when you download the video don't just copy the same title i have cut it pieces be creative so we can get more viewer let us continue and go to another another statement he says so we can love more we are just refreshing your memory and our topic later will be about the blessed urine of the prophet muhammad and we will have a free bottle for anyone who is going to uh, practice the blessing of the prophet urine okay give strong drink hard liquor strong drink hard liquor to him who is perishing anybody who's about to die any nation is about to perish what you do give them strong drink give them hard liquor open your book open the bible and if you have it check it up the book of proverbs chapter 31 and here you see the hypocrisy and the stupidity who they are saying oh how this has happened the guy is dying you idiot this is to ease the pain of the person and we showed you the video how the dad himself was living under influence of the drugs for many years to ease his pain so which one is better drugs cocaine morphine or wine hmm? which one is, is which one of them is halal for you did that so here you see the hypocrisy the dad is the same as a kid he go to the search engine he searched for wine oh wine we see here wine it says give him wine and he make a drama about it when this is about easing the death of a person who is dying funny filthy stupid i don't know what to what to, what to name it but you be the judge you are trying to make a drama and trying to make a theater about something is not even there. So is in the death of a person who is dying from pain for you. This is disgusting. You're a prophet. He died because of poison. And he was suffering from many years. And you said when somebody is dying, you give him honey. Is that going to ease the pain of your prophet? Honey? What if he have dying from diet, di, you know, diabetes? Hmm? You're a prophet. He spent more than four years, and this man himself, he was silenced by God for nine years. He cannot talk. He cannot open his mouth. So when your prophet was dying, and the pain is torturing him, what was your prophet doing to ease his pain? Taking honey. That is very silly and stupid. Here we see that just because they want to make a point against Christianity, they say stupid things, right? Uh, we have Islam is false saying, uh, he's a Muslim. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, is a Messiah. He has two mission, one as a prophet of God and the second mission to come back before the day of resurrection. You see, I ask you why you call him the Messiah. You see, I mean, you know, when I say Muslims are very, they are like kids. They are suffering from low IQ. Guys, look at what is my question. My question, how you call him a Christ, yet he is not God. Do you know what Christ means? And who are you who decide his, his mission? And secondly, you said he will come in the judgment day. I mean, how, how come not Muhammad? Muhammad is the last prophet. So how you say Muhammad is the last prophet, but yet Jesus is the last one? Because the one who come at the end, he is the last one. My question to the Muhammad. When you call a Christ, Christ, why you are calling him a Christ if he is not God? Huh? They don't know. For Muhammad is a fraud. He's a thief. He's a thief. What Jesus mean? Do you know what Jesus mean? You don't know. What Abraham mean? You don't know. What Israel mean? You don't know. What Jibreel mean? You do not know. Mikael mean? You don't know. What Musa mean? You don't know. Why? For Islam is a fraud. And until now, as we speak, every Muslim, he guess what 
Christ mean? They don't know. Actually, one of the interpretation, one of the most funny interpretation for the name of Christ is that he have a flat feet. <laughs> this is why we say Islam is just a fraud. It's a counterfeit cult made by a fraud man from my people, the Arab, to the Arab people to fool them. And then this business became a corporation overseas to collect more women for sex. Now, if we continue with this guy, uh, he's speaking about drinking wine. Okay, if drinking wine is bad, how come Allah, he promised you wine in heaven? I mean, the guy is dying to ease his pain. It's bad to give him wine. What about a person who now is going to live forever? Why you give him wine? Huh? When you read the Quran, Right away, you will notice that you are reading advertising for a pimp house in Las Vegas. Look at this. We have a God. The dad, he don't have a problem. He have a problem with giving wine to a person who is dying to ease his pain. But the dad, he don't have a problem that there is a God. He promised me in heaven, women would be big boobs and there is a cup of wine next to them. We have no problem with that. Do you see it? He have no problem that his God will provide us rivers of wine. Rivers of wine, right? Let us see. If we go here, <clears throat> What do we see here? Chapter 47, verse number 15. Rivers of wine. Let the ten lisha ribin. A joy for the drinkers. Does it say rivers of wine? So a cup of wine for somebody is dying is disgusting. Evil. But rivers of wine is okay do you see the hypocrisy this is not only hypocrisy this is stupidity because you just brought a spank heavy spank to your bum and people are laughing you see uh, the dad was famous because in his time he was debating you know american etc usually the only one who debate him is an arab it was uh, anish Sharush. And Anisha Rush, he spanked him badly. This is why he's making this after the debate. You see, like when a Muslim debate me, he got he, he got tortured. He go, he make 100 videos to explain what happened in the video. He could not refute me when he was live with me. And then he make 100 video to explain what happened with the Christian prince. Rivers of wine is not a problem. Women with big boobs next to me is not a problem. Endless penis. You remember? You remember uh, uh, Farouz, the one who just left Islam two days ago. I don't know if he's here. He challenged me to show him where it says endless penis. Endless penis is not a problem, but a cup of wine for somebody is dying is a problem. Endless penis and the vagina accommodate that penis is not a problem. Is a prophet saying the one who is proud about his inheritance from his people before Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of your father. That is not a problem. But giving a cup of wine to ease the pain of someone is dying is a problem. Do you see the stupidity? Let us continue with this kid and love more. We are just going through to remind you of what we said in the previous video. So let us go more topic because he's you know he make a comment and this is the, the the rest is just mockery and we and we refuted him now topic number four let him drink and forget his poverty yeah yes All right. and by the way he said that god said this is the mother of the king said to him this is another lie he says this is god speaking here you know this is the mother of this king said to him if you go and open you will see the mother of the king she said to him so even when they quote, they have no dignity. Let us continue.
I wish he is alive so we can we can take him in a ride and we love for the prophecy came not prophecy telling you things that is going to happen in the future came not by the will of man by the impulse of man by the whims and fancies of man no but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost as the Holy Ghost moved them tickled them they wrote what they were told to write see how he make fun He's making fun of the Holy Ghost and the Bible says it clearly those who insult the Holy Ghost there is no forgiveness for them so this guy is guaranteed in hellfire will be fried and he said oh they will be tickled by the Holy Ghost well when you're a prophet you know the Bible doesn't say the word tickling but you are making fun right but literally your prophet being squeezed by what you Muslims call him the Holy Ghost if we go in the hadith we will find Muhammad saying Uh, Fifi, wanna call me? He is in the chat. And maybe this is not the real Fifi. I don't, I don't think real Fifi. He would dare to do so. Yeah, hold on. <clears throat> there is a way to click at his account and see if this is a real, a real person. I don't think so. None of them will dare to call me. None of them. They are cowards. Now, listen. This is a fake name. If we go in the Quran, we will see. Uh, oh, well, first, why Quran? Let's go to the Hadith. Let us see. Okay. We are just looking for the authentic one, so they cannot say we are posting something that is not authentic. You know, you know the game. This is Sahih al Bukhari, as you see, and this is Muhammad is, is speaking about how the angel, who the Muslim, they say he is Holy Ghost. The Muslim even they don't know what the Holy Ghost. How you say he is a Holy Ghost and you call him angel? Anyway, here you will see that when the angel came to Muhammad, he was in the cave of Hira. The angel came to him and he asked him to read. The prophet, he replied, I do not know how to read. Then the prophet added, the angel cut me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it no anymore. He then released me again and asked me to read. And this has happened three times, as you see in the story. So the dad is making fun of the Bible, saying that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit tickled the Christians. You see how filthy, savage he is? It doesn't say that. You are filthy, coward, like your prophet. It is you, Muslims, who believe that the Holy Spirit squeezed your prophet. And no mayonnaise came out because after squeezing him three times, what happened? Still, Muhammad is an idiot who does not know how to read. The angel keeps saying to him to re read. Muhammad says, I do not know how to read. The angel squeezes him again and says, read. Muhammad, he says to him, I told you I cannot read. The angel, he squeezed him again and he said to him, read. Muhammad, he said, what's wrong with you? I told you I cannot read. So after squeezing three times, what the difference between before and after? Nothing. It's just a stupid story from a squeezing prophet and a squeezing angel. If you squeeze Muhammad a million times, Muhammad will not be able to read. You cannot make a donkey horse. In China, they say he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So the angel, he thought by squeezing Muhammad, he will be able to read. And this is a proven to us that your God is false. Because the one supposed to be saying the word read, this is the word of Allah. The angel is carrying the word. How, how come Allah, the Muslim, they say, if Allah wants something to happen, he say B is going to be. Here we go. Allah said to Muhammad, read, still he cannot read. Correct, guys? Take a note of that. If a Muslim, he says to you that Allah, he say B is going to be, how that can be? Here we go. He said to Muhammad, read. Muhammad still cannot read. What kind of God, he say, order a man, read. 
Jesus says, Jesus, he made his disciples speak all languages. Jesus, he made the blind see. Jesus, he said to the one who cannot walk, walk, and he walk. Allah said to Muhammad, read, squeezing him three times, still Muhammad cannot read. And here we notice who is the stupid in this story. So did that trying to make fun of the Bible, but because he, there is nobody in the stage to give him a shower. But it's okay, not never too late. We are here to give him a shower, and Muslims can laugh as much as they want. But now this is your duty to cut this video, make it pieces, don't make it long. Like now, we spoke about squeezing, tickling. Make a title, be creative, so you can get more viewers. And don't download the video and keep the same title. Because this is what happens always. People download my video, just load it as it is, and then all of them, they appear in one page on YouTube, and then none of you will get a, review, get a view. Let's go back to that and laugh more. We are just reviewing his what he said because we, we, we spoke about those already this is why we do not need to go over them again this prince of the prophets this is what god does to him what he did to him oh at the same time speak the lord to isaiah god spoke to isaiah the son of amos saying go and lose the sackcloth from thy loins you know the sackcloth that you're tying untie that we showed you what is the sack. The Jews, they have like a uniform they put in the top of when they pray. Even the priests, if, if you go to churches, like traditional churches, they have like, a, you know, like, I don't know what they call it in, in English. Like when women, she go to the kitchen, she put something in the top of her, you know. The priest, rabbi, prophets, they wear that. This is what God's saying to him. And go bear food, which means take off your rank away. Hmm? Show them that there is something is going to happen. Because you are not dressed, dressed properly. For them, this is nakedness. So this guy now is making fun of Isaiah. And he is saying, and you know the funny, he said that Isaiah was walking in Jerusalem. I mean, well, Jerusalem? Okay, well, you, you need that to show us. Where. He didn't even know even where, where Isaiah was walking. He, don't, he said, uh, Isaiah, uh, he was walking in Jerusalem or maybe somewhere else. What if he was in the desert and he was naked? <laughs> Two hours ago, by the way, I was sleeping naked. Is that a problem? <laughs> and he was saying, listen carefully what he was saying. Be the judge. He was saying a shameful act. A, a, a God is ordering Isaiah a shameful act in the Bible, remember. And put thy, off thy shoes from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. A prophet of God, for three years, he's walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem or wherever he was, absolutely naked, not even a G-string. Do you see how filthy he is? Not even a G-string. Do you see it? Where it says what you are saying. You are a filthy coward like your prophet. Now let me get you busted. A prophet of God walking without even a G-string. This is in your story, not in our book. Here we go. Everybody will be laughing at you, you filthy coward. And this is why the that he was making fun and there's nobody there to respond to him. By the way, he was not debating. He's a coward. He was standing in the, in the, Sharush is gone. He, he ran away from debating Sharush for the second time because the first time was horrible. This is your prophet, you filthy. As long as you are saying this is a shameful act, he said in the video, if you, if you play the video, he said a shameful act, a prophet of God walking naked. This is your God, Allah. He made Musa's walk with no G-string, literally. The guy was taking a bath. Allah, he ordered the stone to steal his clothes. The Jews, they accused Musa that he was suffering from disease in his testicles and his penis. And one day he took a bath in the water and he placed his garment upon the stone. The stone began to move quickly. And he followed that and struck it uh, with, the help, with the help of a stone saying, Oh stone, my garment, oh stone, my garment, oh stone, until he stopped near a big gathering of Israel. And this verse was revealed about, Muhammad, about him in the Quran. Who is the one who was walking naked? And there's a verse about it in the Quran. It was Moses. And who is the one who mentioned this story? It was your prophet. If you don't like this hadith, we can show you another hadith. 
Do you see it? Amongst the traditions narrated by Muhammad, from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, who is the one who reported the story? That Musa was walking in the street with no just, just, just drink. As did that, the expert of G-string, he said. And he said, this is a shameful behavior, a shameful teaching. When the Bible never said that he is totally naked, nakedness. You see, when the Bible says that Jesus was crucified, you know, naked, but the fact he is not naked. Nakedness is you showing, like in Saudi Arabia right now, if you show, if a woman, she show her knee, this is naked. If she show her foot, this is nakedness. So nakedness is you wearing something against the tradition. In Brazil, if a woman she walk with a with, with a skirt, it is five inch is not nakedness because they have different tradition. So here you see the stupidity of this man. He just brought an insult and he helped us to expose his God for admitting that this is a shameful behavior, a shameful decision. How can God, he order his prophet to walk naked, moving his penis in front of the people, women and children. As I see, Allah, he made Moses run between the Israeli nation just to prove that his penis is fine. Allah could not find a way to prove that Musa's penis is fine except this. And what the problem if Musa's penis is fine? What about you give him a miracle to show him that my penis will not affect me? <laughs> so as you see, the that he helped us again to laugh at Muhammad and his cult. Let us continue. Shameful, huh? Can you imagine God giving such instructions to his prophet? Can you? His emissary. Go walk, and three years in front of his mother, in front of his daughters. Where, where, where it says in the front of your mother and you, what, what, what filthy coward. You are filthy coward like your prophet. Where it says that? And where it says his, I mean, disgusting creatures, man. Those liars, they will end in hellfire. And the fact is, you know, guys, imagine if I was in the stage next to him, I say, I did that, hold on. Can you read for me this story from your prophet about Allah making Musa's walking without G-string? What he will say? He just said, this is shameful. He said, can you imagine this? Can you imagine God ordering his prophet to do shameful act? What he will say after that? Here, Allah did not even order Musa's. He forced Musa's to chase his clothing. And he made the rock run until he stopped between big group of the, of the Jews. Let us go to the second topic so we can love more. Yes, so you also we're gonna make you to do the same. <laughs> and the funny the Muslims are laughing too. This is remind me when uh, Mimi was debating uh, David Wood. The uh, Mimi he says he said that Allah have parts what he said so and the Muslims they start laughing. It's the Quran it says so, you idiot. Your prophet says so. Allah have hand, Allah have shin, Allah have foot, Allah have five fingers, Allah have five eyes. And we are the so and the Muslim they laugh. It is a religion of mockery. This is why you need to learn how to, to, to how to deal with their mockery. They think by doing mockery, they can prove you wrong. No, my friend, the mockery will go back to you and it's going to be horrible. And look what we are doing now. You are dead, and we are using your videos to laugh at Muhammad. Not at you, you are dead. You are in hellfire already. Okay. Um, he says that he does not. He says, Kul, tell them, Inna Allah, la bil fasha. Allah does not command any shameful deed. Allah don't command any shameful do deeds. Shall we count? Is it shameful deed to have sex with the children at the age of six? No. Allah don't order. You know, Allah order you to do sex with children. It's okay. This is not shameful deed. Did Muhammad go to the house of his own son wife and he flirted with her when she was married in her house? This is not shameful deed in Islam. Did Allah order Muhammad to go and kill the Christian and the Jews and rape the woman? This is not shameful deed. Did Allah say is kill the Christian or they pay you if they want to live? This is not shameful deed. Did Allah order in the Quran that Allah will not take you accountable for taking false oath? This is not shame deed to take and use the name of their God in vain. Is Allah is the one who promised you uh, 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 as an example, uh, doing muta, renting women for three days, three nights, and in return, 
you exchange the property and money this is not shameful deed is Allah the one who order you that you have a prophet and this prophet any woman she can give her panty to him to have sex with her not a shameful deed I mean all of Islam is a shameful deed Muslim they say we are against adultery they practice muda. They say we're against adultery, they practice orfi. Orfi is like a paper you sign between you and the women and you have sex together. They practice zawaj a friend, which means you marry a woman as a friend, which means she is not your wife. You rent a hotel for one, one two hours in the in in, a, in 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 hotel for one hour or two hours, depend how fast you are, and then that's supposedly legal. So all of Islam is a shameful deed. Islam says we are against theft, but it's okay to steal from Christian and Jews unless they are paying you jizya. Islam is against uh, uh, adultery, but it's okay to go to the house of your son and flirt with the wife and look at her. It's, a, it's okay according to Muhammad, Illa laman. you can go and touch a woman's vagina and you touch her breast and you touch her private part and you have orgasm as long as you don't have intercourse in the Quran, call it a laman. And you are saying to me, Allah, he don't order shameful deeds. Exactly, because nothing left in Islam is not shameful. He do not need to order you no more. You did all the shameful things. Let us continue. Point, the point after that. Let us see what it is. <clears throat> God talking, so behold, I will corrupt your seed. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. You know what's dung? You know what's dung? Uh, brother, we know what do not know is dung. Explain to us. Do you know what dung? Do you know what dung? Dung. Da, la, 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 dung. Okay, what, what happened? What happened? Why you are angry? Tell us what happened. Yes, excreta. Yes, God Almighty is going to spread dung on your faces. Even that. And the Muslims are laughing. You see here, God is saying to them, you will pay a high price for disobeying me. You will be humiliated to the point dung will touch your face. This is what it says. However, what about you Muslims? And this is our topic for today. The benefit of a drinking the blessed urine of the Holy Prophet. Guys, a curse in the Bible, a prophecy about what will happen to your children if you don't obey me is a problem that was a curse this is what that was a curse that was a penalty not reward God will humiliate you this is what this is an article I will post the link for all of you this is a Muslim website the benefit of a drinking the blessed urine of the Holy Prophet You know, if I say that to you, like let us say we are sitting in a coffee shop and I say the Muslims, they believe that the, ho the prophet piss urine is holy. You will laugh. You will say you are lying. <laughs> Come on. You are, this is Islamophobia now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, this is not true. Here we go. This is the Muslim link. Save it and read it. And they prove it to you by reference. The benefit of a drinking the blessed urine, by the way, if you have my books, you will see that the Muslim, they were fighting over the laundry of the, of the panty, of, of the underwear, of the clothes of Muhammad, to wash their face with it. Even there's one of them, he drunk Muhammad blood. There's a woman, she drunk the piss of the prophet who left it under the bed. And then Muhammad, he said to her, from now on, your stomach will never have pain. But the funny, he himself was dying from pain in his stomach, as we showed you in the hadith. So the one who drink his urine, she is blessed and she will never have pain in her stomach. But you yourself, which is the stomach where the urine coming from, you are dying with pain. Hypocrite liar. So the benefit of drinking the blessed urine of the Prophet, our Prophet, posted by Islamic virtues in Islamic medicine. Islamic medicine. This is Islamic medicine, brother. Brother. Brother, this is Islamic medicine. Take a note, please. If you have a problem, brother, you need the peace of the Prophet. Islamic medicine. Your Prophet was sick all the time. Medicine. Bismillah. 
Ta'ala. I mean, I like it when they write Arabic words when they are supposed to speak in English. No other person in history has had so many blessings bestowed on him, such as were bestowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means the praise be to him, like, you know, he, he's the high. On our beloved, if the kuffar were aware of even a tiny fractions of them, no, we are not aware, tell us please. You see, this is the problem. The kuffar are not aware of the stupidity of Islam. This is why we have many stupid idiots who live in the West that defend Islam because exactly they are an aware donkey, but yet they have big mouth to defend Islam. They would abandon their stubbornness and embrace Islam. For sure, brother. Are you kidding me? I embrace Islam already. Hmm? Hmm, yeah. Uh, Jesus uh, said, said, eat my flesh and drink. Ah, here we go, just another example, guys. This is just another example of the low IQ of Muhammadan. Here, I will show you a verse from your Bible, or your own Bible. Jesus said, said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> you see, do we laugh at you? Because Jesus was a drinking juice and he was eating bread. And said, this is do this to remember me. So we were eating bread, you idiot. You stupid silly. I want to grow like one, someone like you in my backyard, but the city is not allowed to me. I don't know if you can talk to them. And you can tell them in your way about the blessed urine of your holy prophet. Let us continue. For example, in the case of the where the companion of the prophet drinking his blessed urine, what? The companion of the prophet drinking his blessed urine. Muhammad, he have a ticket machine in front of his house. Please don't drink more than you should. Two millimeter of piss for everybody. Unless the prophet, he had, was a horse and he was pissing like a river. How, 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 how much he pissed this guy? He was a pissing machine because... What do you mean they are drinking his urine? And how, how they are drinking his urine? Where he put it? I mean, he, he, he pissed in their mouth. Only to discover that she was now being shielded completely from hell. Which, what was she? Uh, this is a female. Ah, yeah, this is the one we told you about. She drank the... She drank the, the the piss which was under the bed. See guys, the benefit of a drinking the urine of Muhammad, you are shielded from hell. The piss, the piss of the prophet is hell proof, not bullet proof. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this before? Why we have only 700 people here? Where is everybody? 800 people. You guys are not doing a good job. I'm going to leave soon, honestly. You see, if I'm a Muslim, if I am a Muslim, trust me, a Muslim kid, we will have thousands of people here. Christians, they come here just to listen and laugh. They don't care really to do any work. Muslims, they follow false God, stupid religion, but they support it. 800 people for, you know, why? How in the world we have only 800 people listening? I'm not complaining about the number, by the way, but this is not right. The Lord himself, he have only 12. But today we have apps where people, they, a woman is speaking about lipstick, she have 5,000 listening. That's mean we are not doing the right thing. We are not sharing links. We are not inviting people. If every one of you, 700, invite one person, imagine how many we will have. I will finish soon. And you guys, you enjoy your day. So the prophet piss prevent you from going to hell. Is not you believing in God. No. 
It's not God. No, the piss of the prophet is more powerful than God. God himself cannot take you to hell because you drank the piss of Muhammad. And here they are showing you the reference. And those are sahih. They are sahih. Authentic. Authentic report. You see, the Muslim cannot say this is not authentic. The game of weak and stupidity. Imam al suyuti narrated an authentic report. And this is the hadith. The dad is complaining about the Bible speak that a human being who don't obey God, he will be humiliated in the mud and in the dunk. And then he says that even the Bible says you will cook on it. You see, Muslims, if you have a problem with cooking and dunk, so why you cook and dunk? All of you Muslims, you cook a dunk even after we have the oil. Until now, the biggest Islamic countries in the world, they use dunk to cook. Let us see. Just to show you the hypocrisy of this nation. This is Bangladesh. This is what? Bangladesh. And what do you see in front of you? Mounted up. Those are dunk. Those or these are dunk. So, making fun, showing your ignorance, human being suffer for long to the point he is using dunk. Imagine, this is humiliation for a human being to go and collect dunk so he can cook in it. And who is the one is doing that? Muslims. Which country? Bangladesh. Which means the dunk is feeding millions of Muslims in Bangladesh. And the that was making fun. Stupidity is amazing. Where you were? Where you been? The that you don't know that people use dunk to cook until now as we speak. Hundreds of millions of poor people who cannot afford to have gas or etc. They use dunk. To cook in it here you notice the hypocrisy of those who they are just making statement against the bible just to make a statement against the bible not because they are right not because it makes sense not because it is legitimate but just because they want to make a statement against the bible and by doing that you help us to expose your hypocrisy and your stupidity so what we notice that muslim they drink the peace of muhammad Muslim, they use the dunk to cook on it as the Bible said. The Muslim, by the way, they lie. They say, you make cake from it. I mean, th this is how liars they are. The, the Bible is speaking about you cook on it. You don't eat it. However, it is your prophet who said you eat it. If we go in the hadith, we will find your prophet. He order you to drink camel urine. If dunk is bad, to be in your face. Piss is good to be in your lips, in your stomach, in your nose. This is your prophet. He order you, Muslims, to drink the milk of the camel and the urine of the camel between two brackets as a medicine. By the way, Muslims now, they are using the camel urine to fight Corona. Now, Let me find you the news.
Can you believe it? Watch Iranian. This is Al Arabiya, Islamic TV station from Saudi Arabia. The Iranian scholar medicine specialist says camel urine can stop corona. No wonder people in Iran they are dying left and right. Do you know what the price now of a camel urine because of because of this advertising lying to people? Between fifty to one hundred dollar for a little cup of camel urine. And I assure you, it's not even camel urine. It's a it's a guy who is saying urine is pissing him and the family, and they said it. World Organization, they issue a warning for Muslims saying, stop drinking camel urine. It's very dangerous. Not only camel urine is dangerous, even the milk of the camel is dangerous. And the report in the front of you. Do you see it? Advising Islamic government not to allow their citizen to drink camel urine E, not only camel urine, even the camel milk is dangerous. You have to boil it. Have a very, very dangerous viruses. And Muhammad was ordering his followers to drink both the camel urine and the camel milk. Drink camel urine to cure coronavirus. Absolutely. But the dad is complaining about God will humiliate you for disobeying me to the point you will have dunk in your face. This guys imagine dunk in your face. This is in the Bible. This is in the Bible. And we, then we find that the biggest Islamic countries in the world they are using dunk until now, as the Bible says, they cook in it. You touch the dunk with your hand and then you touch your face. Here we see that there is a lot of hypocrisy. Do we have any Muslim he have the courage to call us? Any Muslim he claimed that he have something to say? So I can open Skype. Do we have any brave Muslim? He have something to say, so I will open Skype. Any Muslim? No problem, there is no Muslims. You know, the funny, this guy, he called himself Islam is the truth. When Islam says Islam is not a truth, and I will show you how. You see, if Islam is a truth, then how come the one who will come back to save the world is Jesus? Because Islam based on that Muhammad is the best of mankind. So the best of mankind right now he's dead. And the one who is not the best of mankind is the one who's going to save the world. So Islam as a movie is written by a stupid author, bad director, bad actors. Muhammad is the most beloved prophet for Allah. Muhammad cannot make the blind see. Jesus can. Muhammad is the most honorable person to Allah. Muhammad, he cannot resist seeing his own son wife in front of him without a flirting with her. Jesus never commits him. Muhammad is the most decent man. They called him Al Amin, the trustworthy. To the point the Muslims they accuse him of stealing underwear. While Jesus, even his enemy, they could not accuse him of sin. And he challenged him for that. Muhammad is the most beloved person to Allah to the point he wrote his name on the chair. Where? On the chair. But right now, as we speak, the one who is sitting on that chair is Jesus. According to Islam. The Quran says, Rafi'uka ilayya, to me. Not to the first heaven, second heaven. Ilayya, which means with me. Where? Ilayya. I will take thee up to me. 
Where is Jesus right now? On the throne of Allah. The stupid Muhammad, in order to make the Christians accept him, he have to come with some statement, and those statements get him busted. Chapter 3, verse number 55, it says it clearly. Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take thee and rise thee to myself. Where is Allah now? Supposedly, according to the Quran, with Jesus. Do you see it? Myself, not to the lowest floor, not to the basement of my heaven. Myself. So even the stupid Quran is full of a proof that Jesus is the almighty God. And Muslims cannot answer that. He said he is willing to debate me. And this guy is a kid. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. And okay, well, and where are they? He's willing to debate me. <laughs> I never saw a Muslim. He's willing to debate me, actually. That will never happen. Especially those who have, who do as a business, you know, like me, me, Fifi, Susu, Dudu, all those guys, they are doing business. They don't dare because that will be the end of their career. And this is why all of them, they make an excuse. I want to debate you only face to face in order to avoid debating me. They have no problem to take calls in Skype with everybody, speak to each other, but only me with me, no. And the excuse, I will hang up on them. But I will call you on your show. Hang up on me. Correct, guys? You go live. I will call you. This way, nobody can hang up on you. Excuse. It's a false excuse. Do we have any Muslim? I will go on Skype. Only Muslims can call, please. Don't call me if you are not a Muslim. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah, somebody is asking me when I invite a sheikh to debate me, invite as many as you want, not only sheikh, invite all the sheikh, invite all the sheikh corporation in the world. Very free. My Skype is open. I see no Muslim texting me or calling me. Where are they? Where are they? What happened? Guys, don't tell me, don't repeat his name. He want to debate, he want to debate. My Skype is open. If he is a man, he can call me. Don't repeat, don't repeat. Those kids, I don't want to see their names. This guy want to debate. The one I want to debate, me, he can call me. I mean, do they, do they just need a party? He want to debate, he want to debate. They don't, okay, here we go. My Skype is open and you call me. Don't repeat. You do not need to say this guy want to call and this guy, okay, no problem. Here we go. We are on Skype. Call. Those Muslims are like somebody, he got married 10 years ago and he keeps saying to his wife, today I'm going to sleep with you. And she's wondering why they have no babies. Their prophet, he married many women because he cannot have sexual intercourse. In order to make himself like, okay, I am not a problem, I don't have a problem. He keeps marrying more women just to cover, to cover the problem. Because those Arab, they don't consider you as a man unless you can have kids. This is why there's a chapter in the Quran about his penis. A man, he accused Muhammad that he is cut off. He said to him, Al-Abtar, you don't have a penis. And Muhammad keep marrying. And Muhammad keep marrying. And Muhammad keep marrying. Why? Because he want to show people that he is a man. But all the women he married from, he could not make them have babies. Because he's not sleeping with them. And not only that, Muhammad, he exaggerated with his lies to the point he claimed that he go around to all his wives and he do boom, boom without even washing. Look how horny he is. Look how powerful he is.
but in the same time you will notice how faithy he is if this is true a man is going from a woman to a woman non-stop having sex with one after one without washing and he washed at the end supposedly and they say how AIDS spread let us see the hadith here we go it was narrated by Anas that the messenger of Allah used to go around his wife and he did perform one ghusl, which means one wash. You see it? And here, here they are saying, go around his wife, but the fact is go and have sex, supposedly. What go around his wife? Let us see, one is saying clearly, Here we go. One day, a messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, had sexual intercourse with all his wives in a single path. Do you see it? The guy he have thirteen wives, at least. He had sex with thirteen wives in one day. And he did not wash until the end. This is what the Muslim is saying, not me. This is Muslim statement. Here you notice, if this is true, Muhammad is not a human, he is a beast. He is not a prophet too. Because when, 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 he, when he did pray, in order to have 13 wives having sex with them, Without washing, that's mean all this period you did not wash. Muslim, they have to wash before they pray. So, how fast Muhammad was having sex with 13 women, or 11 women, or 12 women? And why the Prophet did not wash? How filthy? How much bacteria he carry on from women to women? And why even this is in the news? Why if I sleep with my wife, I have to publish it in the internet and tell everybody, unless this person is a perverted man? You know what I mean? This is something very, very private. A person who is respected, he will never speak about this in front of people. This is your business. This is between you and your family. And the coward is saying to me, open your Skype. My Skype is open, potato. I know that you are fake. You are not the real Fifi. But still you are stupid. <clears throat> yeah, you know, they're attacking Christian villages in, in Mali every day. But nobody talk about it. You see, the whole world is busy. With this poor guy who was killed in by the policeman it's a one man but a village was him you know was killed all of it in mali nobody speak about it a, a village of africa because they are christian poor african a person in america the whole world want to cry for it's strategy in a tragedy yes but why they don't talk about the christian being killed every day every day the christian being slaughtered and nobody remember them. Any Muslim? <clears throat> Any Muslim would like to call me and maybe he will leave Islam today? Who want to try his luck? Who is a Muslim going to try his luck? We have, a, we have a missed call, but this is not from today. Uh, he said he is a Muslim, he want to call me. Let us text him, tell him I am live now. Call. Maybe he will call. Any Muslim? Mayday. Mayday, Mayday. Any Muslim? 
who wanna go to heaven? Because trust me, if you defend Allah, Allah will make you drink the piss of the Prophet and that will shield you from hellfire. As in the hadith and the story here. And by the way, the Muslims, they have tons of articles about, they, are, they have studies, you know, about the, the, the piss of the Prophet. Like as, as you see here, go here, scholar, scholar span. Here you go, you will find articles about the Prophet urine. If you like to educate yourself about the blessed urine of the Prophet, because this is a special urine. This is not like your urine, my urine. This is uranium urine, shiny urine. Actually, Muhammad, he said when his mother, she gave birth to him, a light came from her vagina, reached all the way to the palaces of Damascus. So even his mother, her urine, obviously, is shiny. It's uranium. A light from the vagina of his mother went all the way to Damascus, a thousand and two hundred miles away. And the people who live in Mecca did not see the light. And no historian reported such a thing. Imagine, guys, the Roman was in Damascus at that time. The Roman, all this way there, it was for the Roman. Nobody reported such a thing. You can imagine Muhammad, mother, his leg, her legs is open and the light is coming. And flying all the way. And why, by the way, went in the in, in direction of Damascus? I mean, may, ah, maybe her legs was open in the direction of Damascus. Ah. I was thinking about it. Why? 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 Yeah, this is where the muscle go. So here you will see the article <clears throat> speaking about the urine of the prophet and the blessing of his urine. All oh, those look at look at this. Look at this. Look how long the article. Look how long the reference. Look how big and how authentic it is. All of this is speaking about how wonderful the blessed urine of the prophet used to have a wooden bowl in which he used to urine, urinate and place under his bed. One night, he searched for it, but did not find it. And he asked for it, saying, huh, where is the bowl? The member of the house replied, Umm Salama, slave girl, drunk it. She what? She drunk it. Who came from Habasha, Muhammad, he have a slave girl from Habasha, from Ethiopia. Hello? Hello? Yes. CP, uh, can I say something? You can say something, no problem. Do you, do you, are you listening to our topic uh, or no? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, study Islam very good at Tafsir, Quran, Hadith, and I will call you back one year later, okay? That's all? Yeah, just give me one year and wallahi, alhamdulillah, I will destroy you. Wallahi, wallahi. Okay, why one year? I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mahdi, why wallahi? Why wallahi one year? Why one year? What about maybe you need more? Are you sure one year will work? Okay, maximum two years. Okay, but what about we, we, we do something better? What about you get me somebody, he studied Islam already for years and you make him call me. What do you think? No, 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 I'm going to do the job myself. No problem until you are ready because we want to, we need a snack, my friend. We need a snack, you know, we need to have fun. Why you don't call your sheikh and ask him to call me? He hang up. So, well, man. I don't think they, I don't think they want an online debate, you know. Why not? I don't know. What the, what is the problem? I will speak to them nicely and, you know, everybody, I have, like, you can go watch my debate with Sheikh Abdul Wadud, how it was. With, with Sheikh uh, mm. uh, uh, Rohi, uh, you know, the, if the person is rude, I will speak to him in, in the way he deserves. If you are nice, I will speak to you nice. Everybody knows. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Okay. Do you have a Sheikh? You know, like, okay. you, do you have a Sheikh? You know, he's, you think he is strong enough to take the stand? Sorry? Do you know somebody? He's a I, sheikh? I know, I know people that are very uh, knowledgeable. Okay. Are they Sheikh or just knowledgeable? They're very like uh, scholar. They're, uh, I know uh, a student of a scholar. Well, we want a scholar. Why the student? Why? Why you want to waste your time and bring us a student when the scholar he is stronger? So, like, 
because okay so now the student he called the student could not make it then we have to go and call the scholar save yourself call the scholar say hey this guy making a lot of muslims leave islam and we need your help can you please debate him and we know we will be fair one a question from I'm him gonna, one a question I'm from him try. one a question from me anything he want no problem you see we do not need okay. to prepare even I'm for a topic try. yeah yeah just a, a try yeah. and let me know and from now, I've only uh, watched the uh, videos from Speakers Corner and the base, but I never studied Islam myself. I'm going to study Islam. Uh, those Speaker Corners, they are a bunch of kids. The Speaker Corners, like they say to you, uh, uh, you say uh, Allah have a have part. Who said so? There is no way a Muslim who now have knowledge, he will say that. But when you are a kid, you can say whatever you want. Those are a bunch of kids. Those are a bunch of kids. Those are not, you know, they are not people who have, none of them have degree in Islam, none of them study Islam. They are people who, because they live in England, they go to the park and they bark, you know, but none of them knows what he's talking about. So if you want to debate, you know, you have to debate somebody. This is why actually debating someone who knows Islam, he's a scholar, is way easier than debating a kid because a kid, he can say, it doesn't say that. You know what? Mm -hmm. He can deny easy. By saying he don't, it doesn't like yeah. like Mimi when he was debating David Wood. So it doesn't say that. Who said that to you? A scholar will never say that, for he will be yeah. taken accountable for what he say. But when you are a kid, you say anything you want, and nobody will go after you. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. But uh, when I when I call you in one to two years, are you gonna remember me? My friend, it's hard for me to remember people, but you can remind me, no problem. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I I, I will call you then. Okay. But uh, hold on, hold on. What? Why now you don't call the mosque right now when you are talking to me? Call a mosque and say there is a person I want you to convert him to Islam. Don't say he's a Christian prince. Well, well, I know a lot of uh, knowledgeable people. I'm gonna try and uh, get the scholars. No, okay? no, Mahdi, Mahdi, but listen, cannot... listen. No, no, yeah. you call the mosque. I mean, the Sheikh, the Imam of the mosque. No problem. Call and the, the scholar says I have a, a, a Christian here and he is with us in a conference. And he, he, he can hear you. And I'm trying to convert him to Islam. And give him the microphone. And you said, listen, what do you but, think? But uh, if a scholar comes here, are you going to have a, like a, your mic debate when uh, he finished speaking, he says your mic and then... Uh, no, no, my, not only that, finish. actually, he is, the one, he is the one who will talk. I will talk only when he finished. No problem. I promise you. No problem. I will, yeah. I will try. Yeah. No, no, now. Now, do it now. Now. <laughs> Why not? Why not? We want to have fun. We want to show you that your scholars are potatoes. This is the whole point. Because if they are a scholar, they should be ready anytime. How come I'm ready? I don't know what he will say to me. I just said to you, he, 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 he speak, he say whatever he want. Whatever he say, I will go with it. You see, I'm not even saying Why? we're not debate about this topic or that topic. Anything he want, anything, anything. Imagine how, how big the challenge is. How come I am ready and I am not the Muslim? And they are the scholars and they are not ready. Why? Why now? Because I'm ready, always ready. Here we go. You call oh, me. Uh, Do I know you, Mahdi, before? Have, have, have you ever met? I don't know who you are. When we say any Muslim yeah. can call me, any Muslim can call me. He can be big, he can be small, he can be educated, he can be young. We don't know. So he can yeah. call me and he can say whatever he wants. From, from the words he say, I'm going to I'm going to, go to, to make my statement, which means he is the one who will make a statement. He is the one who will say things. And based on what he say, we are going to stay with it. So call him right now. Don't you have any shake? Right now that I know. Yeah. Uh, I I know uh, two shakes, but I don't not I don't, I don't have the phone number. I uh, come on, you search uh, search uh, internet, uh, Mahdi. This is not uh, this is not really a legitimate answer, my friend. Because you can search the internet. All of them they have uh, they, they, as long they are shake. I mean they are public figures, so they have their numbers. People call them. Tell him I'm trying to make this guy take shahada. You know, help me. Yeah. Brother, you know, but the thing is, uh, some scholars they have knowledge, but they are not good in debating. You know, I don't have knowledge, but I'm good in debating. That's the thing. Ah, he have he yeah. Mahdi, he have knowledge. He he ha he good in debating, but he don't have knowledge. How that work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, with an, with the knowledge I have, I you know, Mahdi. These arguments, thank you know? God, you are not the mechanic who want to fix my car because you are good in fixing cars, but you have no knowledge in it. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. true story. Uh huh. So, are you going to call a scholar or uh, what now? What we will do? Yeah, I, I will try. Hmm. 
Okay, I will, I will be online for some time. Try to call them right now and call me back if you can get somebody, okay? Okay, no, no, no problem. Okay, yeah. take care, Mandy, take care. Bye. Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing? He's good in debating, but he don't have good knowledge. Uh, somebody calling him, calling himself free, very, very free. I don't think this is the right one. Let us see. <coughs> Hello? Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as salam. Who is with me? I simply don't get it. Why would you do this? See, people, this, is a, get this is a video. This is a video. Pants this, down. Is a, this is a video. You're supposed to pull them up. You're not supposed to insist Fifi, Fifi. on a mistake. You made a mistake. Fifi. And not Coward. Get me the real Fifi. Don't play a video for me, potato. Shame on you. Yeah, this is a video recording. CP, you made a mistake. <laughs> My friend, it's not a mistake. Your prophet penis is not working. I can prove it. CP, you made a mistake. My friend, it's not a mistake. He promised you an endless penis. I can prove it. CP, you made a mistake. I challenge you to prove to me where this quotation from Fathul Bari, and then we find that Fathul Bari is there. I challenge you to prove it. I mean, it's a bunch of kids. I said to myself, do he really even dare to call me? It's impossible. Eh, it's a video. Anyone? They don't dare. You see, ask yourself a very simple question. How come those people, they have big mouth, but they don't dare to go live on air and say, okay, you see, I say I hang up on you. Go live on air. Give me your Skype. I will call you. I will call you, which means you can hang up on me. All right. We have a caller. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Am I talking to CP? Christian Prince, not CP. Go ahead. Am I to, um, what am I talking to? Am I talking to CP? Christian Prince, with you. Go ahead. Okay, um, yes, I have, I have three questions for you, okay? Why three, not, answer, why three, not four? Why three? Is that Trinity um, thing? Hmm. I'm going to accept Christianity. Oh, okay. Accept these three. Okay, no problem. If Go you, ahead. If you answer me these three questions, okay? Yeah, but who is going to make the decision that I did oh, answer you or did not answer you? Who is going to First make, question. who is going to be the judge that uh, I answered you or I not? Want you, I just want you to. Hmm? Okay, Shmila. Okay, Shmila. First of all, hmm. okay, hmm. why, okay, I want you to answer me honestly, why do you show people the Aif Hadith? Why I show people the Aif Hadith? That you show people the Aif Hadith it's a week. Okay, first of all, yes. why you Muslim show us the Aif Hadith, so we will show you the Aif Hadith. Isn't you who show me the Aif Hadith, then I will show you the Aif Hadith. How it is Aif and it is located in the book of Sahih. So look what happened now. You are saying to me, why I'm oh, showing you listen, a hadith? Listen, hold listen. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me answer you. My friend, you ask me, you ask me a question, please. Let me answer you. You are asking me why I'm showing you a hadith written in your book. So why you are writing it in your book if it's not it's not accepted? Why you Muslims collect the hadith? So put it in your book. No, no you, so you are saying to me, you are saying to me that we are Muslims, we lie a lot, and you should not use our lies against us. Is that what you are saying? <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. I, I don't want to go deep. Anymore. No, 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 I need to go okay. deep. No, I want to go deep. No, 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 I want to go deep. No, no, don't change the topic. Don't change the topic. Why you Muslims? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You are the one who said the question. Please, please, please. Listen. Why you Muslims collect the hadith if it's rejected? So you collect it because it's accepted. But, when, but then when we show it to you, you reject it because it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing, isn't it? No, okay, fine, I have fine. in front of me in the screen a Sahih Hadith about okay. a woman she drank the peace of the Prophet. Oh, okay. Hold on, I have an authentic Hadith in front of me. 
The woman, she drank the piss of the prophet. Authentic hadith. She drank the piss of the prophet. Now, and the prophet, he says, hellfire will not, will not reach you because she drank his piss. What do you say about this authentic hadith? Go ahead. Why the, why the hellfire, why the hellfire will not reach this woman who drank the piss of your prophet? How, 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 the, how the piss of your prophet protect the women? I'm the one who's asking. See, I'm the one who wants answers from you. But we cannot do it this way. You are just the one answering. We are having a conversation. The whole point, the whole, the whole point here, the whole point, listen, the whole point is having a conversation, not just, just asking questions. Otherwise, put them in the text. So we have a conversation. That's why we are talking. So I'm asking you, why the women, hellfire will not touch her because she drank the piss of your prophet. Go ahead. First of all, you should understand this, okay? Hmm. When the Prophet وسلم, huh. okay, uh -huh. when he he used, first of all, you talked of the Prophet uh, about Ghusl, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You talked about Ghusl, right? Yeah. First of all, what you don't understand, and this is uh, what Farid said, mashallah, he's a good brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw his, his response. He's a kid for anyway, me. Okay, anyway, what he, what he said. He answered this perfectly because one Ghusl. Do you know one ghusl is one ghusl is basically a ritual that is done when you have done sex. Okay, that, that's that's the the point. Yeah, but the when point he, is he have sex with all his wives, my friend. Okay, okay. You, you see, your Farid is a kid. Your Farid is a kid. Your your Farid is a kid. Your my friend, your Farid is a kid because he admitted that you're a prophet. He had sex with all the wives. Listen, you don't understand did, the did you, did you, did, did you I'm Muslims, thinking. okay, hold on, hold on, did you agree that your prophet have sex with all the wives without washing? Do you, know did, do you, do you agree, yes or no? When you say, when you say, listen, listen, mm. listen, mm. when you say one ghusl, mm. meaning he slept with one. Only one. Okay, here, let, let us read. Let us read together, guys. Let us read. Let us read together. Let us read together. One day, the Messenger of Allah had sexual intercourse with all his wife with one single path. Where it says that because if it's it's the whole day one single path, it's mean one single path. Not every woman. It's it's it's, it's it says that you know you see. So so for, so Fifi so Fifi your sister Fifi is, is lying to you, my friend. Fifi is lying to you. Because it says it clearly that Five after percent. he have sex with all of them, they, he have one single path. No, no, no. It says it says that in the front of you, and this is Sahih. Okay, okay. It says, my friend, my friend, does it say? Does it say? Does it? Does it say? Does it say? With all his, my friend, my friend. You, you, your, your, your Fifi. Ask my questions. Listen, 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 listen. No, why you are changing the topic? Read, read the hadith. It says, read the hadith. It says, with all his wives, with a single bath, with, with all his wives, with a single bath. Does it say that or I'm lying? That is the right That's Daif. No, this is Sahih. Here we go. Listen. Okay, guys. It's Sahih. No, bingo. No, bingo. No, bingo. Bingo. No, 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 no. Bingo, bingo. It's Sahih. Read it. It's Sahih. It is Sahih. I don't care if you are a scholar or not. This is why you are watching. This is why you are watching Fifi CC Numu. But they don't dare to debate me. No. So your Fifi says to you, your Fifi, hold on. You got, you got your Fifi busted now. Look what you did. You just said that Fifi, he said that Muhammad, he was having a, 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 a wash after each sex. But the hate in the front of you say it clearly. <laughs> so what do you do? You want? Are you laughing at your prophet? Wallahi, the more you listen by the way, listen by the way, listen, listen, listen. listen. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. I accept. Accept what? No, I don't want to, to, to get into it. Okay. Why listen. not? Why not? No, no. I, I, I want. Question. I want you to get on it. Okay, what? What kind of a prophet? What kind yes. of a prophet? He had sex with all his wife in single Why bath. Why don't you want not to meet him? Hmm. What? Listen, bro. Listen, listen, about that, I'm not a scholar. I wanted you to answer that. Uh, okay, no, no, but, but you are a scholar now. You learn from Fifi. Fifi is a scholar. He have a long beard. No, didn't Fifi teach you? Fifi, he taught you that he have a have bath after each one of them? Show us how that happened. <laughs> And by the way, when your prophet he have a bath, how your prophet have a bath? How your prophet he have a bath? Do you know? How your how your prophet he have a bath? Did, did you know when when Fifi Listen. explained to you about bath? Did he explain to you that your prophet he used to take bath Listen. with dead dogs and women blood from period? Is it true that Listen. your prophet he used to take a bath with dead dogs and women blood from period? 
and garbage, uh, yes or no? Seven. Yes or no? When you say to me, my prophet, he have sex with all his uh, wife, and then he took a bath. My, pro know, my prophet, when me. you say to me, my prophet, he have sex. Uh, I'm answering the question. You ask me the question. I'm talking about it. Here we go. Five, when you say that the prophet, when the prophet, he had sex with all his wife, he took a bath. Listen. So, 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 no, you don't tell me. Don't tell me. He's a kid. He's a kid. This is why he don't dare to call me. And this is why you are now. Listen. Because, because this kid is a kid, now you are trying to change the topic. I want you to give me the answer he gave you. No, give me the answer he gave you. Why you are changing the topic? As long as he's a scholar and you are using his statement and you are the one who said to me, the, uh, Fifi, he said, this is not true. He have washed after every single one of them. Where he got this from? I'm showing you the hadith. It says he have one wash after having sex with all the wives. So either you have to admit that Fifi is a liar or you admit that Christian Prince is saying the truth and all of you Muslims are a bunch of liars. And you say to me, this is Daif. No, it's not Daif. Here we go. Don't change the topic. Your Fifi is in trouble. He lied to you and you get him busted. You, you get him busted. You get him busted. That's the best answer I can give you. Farid has the response. He has no response. Here we go. You, get, you, you, gave, you, you gave me the response. We are laughing. You, you, you gave me the response and we are laughing and secondly yes, when you say well, no problem you can ask me when your prophet he took a bath did he take a bath with dead dogs yes or no hello did you hang up no using the internet of the neighbors hello The prophet, he took a bath with who? Dead dogs, women of blood different period. Rags of women menstruation. Read it. And garbage. Who said that? The Muslims. And they said to me, why you are reading weak hadith? This is not weak hadith. And if it's weak, why you have it there? The game of weak is something to avoid answering questions and the stupidity of Muhammad. What happened to this guy? Where did he go? Did he leave? Call in hold. I think this is Fifi calling him. The call in hold. Fifi is calling him. He says, why are you call him, man? Why are you are calling him? I assure you, this is Fifi calling. He's watching. <laughs> Fifi, me, so, so, do, do. A bunch of potatoes. You cannot, you don't dare even to open a topic. Imagine, this is the topic they choose. They don't want to speak about it. They open a topic. We spank them. Change it. I don't want to go out there. You are the one who mentioned it. Why you don't want to go? Hmm? He hung up. Fifi told him, hang up. The prophet he took the prophet he took a bath. And then we check okay, what kind of bath this bath is? This is a bath. How this is can be a bath? How this is can be a bath? So after having sex with all the wives, Muhammad he have sex with all the wives with, with single bath, and this is the bath. Muhammad, he jumped in the jacuzzi, which have dead dogs, women of blood from period, rags from period, garbage and stinky. Huh? This is the truth. Can you deny it? You cannot deny it. The Muslim, you want to call me to a discussion, not a debate. Uh, you know, what discussion a debate? It's the same for me. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. You are welcome. So you are a Muslim, my friend? Ah, yes. Okay, you ah, said... Sorry. You, you said you have... A... Sorry again, what you said? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as But by the way, how come you are saying to me, you Muslim, Assalamu alaikum? Don't you know that the Prophet, he forbid Muslims from saying that peace to the Christians? Um, no, I think this is like a fake nice way to uh, keep say blessing to other people. Well, yeah, it's nice way, I understand. But you know, uh, uh, the Prophet of Islam, he says, that's not, this is haram. You should not do that. And not only that, if you see Christians, 
uh, if you if you see Krishna in the street, you have to spit in their face and force them to walk in the sewage. Read the hate in front of you. Read the hadith. So Muslims, when they say peace unto you, like I, I am assuming that you are a good guy, you have a nice heart, but a Muslim who knows Islam very well, he will not say that for this is against Islam. Unless he is playing taqiyya. Not only yes. you cannot, you, not only you cannot say to me peace, you have to force me to walk in the sewage. You have to humiliate me. And this is sahih. No problem, my friend, go ahead. What do you want to say to me? I'm not going to question your knowledge much. Yeah, so actually I want, I just want to uh, discuss. I don't want to really debate you because I also have uh, many doubts about this uh, religion, actually. Okay. So uh, I saw some of your uh, video online in YouTube, also some video that I already uh, transmitted and uh, translate into Indonesian language mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I'm from Indonesia, by the way. All right. And then I learn quite a lot from uh, your video that there is something, something not right in Islam. Absolutely. Finally. Okay, that's wonderful. Then uh, I just wonder about uh, maybe this is not really related into uh, this topic today. And then when you uh, show one hadith to the uh, previous color, mm -hmm. uh, then you about when uh, Muhammad uh, taking back from the uh, pool that the water. Uh, full of garbage, uh, dead dogs, uh, yeah. that of menstruacy from the woman. Yeah. I think this is not about the taking bed after he got intercourse with uh, his wife, but about uh, doing preparation before prayer. Yeah, but you I see, it the, doesn't matter. For the, 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 the prayer, my friend, the prayer in this time is more important than normal bath for this is what purify you right so this is more important this is a higher rank bath so if this is how you prepare yourself to be in the presence of god this is how that's mean how faithy are you you know what i mean if a bath I see, but, but if, if, if a bath is just to clean yourself really like a... okay my friend bath Sorry. is just to clean yourself right and actually you know if you read the hadith you will see, you will see aisha saying that he used to do ghusl which is a preparing for wudu I can show you the reference. Yeah. Can Can you? Yeah, sure. Let's just go back. Um, give me a second. The same term used in Ghusl is the same term used by Aisha when he goes to and go to pray. Let us see. Here we go. You see the word Ghusl? Let us go here. Um. No, let I okay, hold refresh on. my YouTube first. Uh, here we go. This hadith says, The Prophet do not perform wudu after the ghusl. You see the ghusl? So ghusl yeah. is making him ready. And this is the ghusl he used to do after he have sex. You see it? This is the same word. He don't do wudu after ghusl. That's it. That's mean ghusl is considered as wudu. It's not doing like uh, tayammum. No, no, ta no. Tayammum is different story. Tayammum, like you know, this is uh, you know, if somebody he don't have uh, all the means of uh, normal, uh, uh, natural uh, wudu like water, etc. You do tayammum, but this is about ghusl. So ghusl, if you do ghusl, he don't do the rest. That's it. He don't do the uh, 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 the ablution for this is considered as ghusl for him, right? And who is the witnessing for that Aisha? And this is sahih. This is Sahih Hadith, you know. It says, and the funny, by the way, it says in Arabic, "Qala Abu Isa, hada hadithun hasanun Sahih." Abu Isa said, "This is a hadith which is Hassan and Sahih." In here, it says Daif. <laughs> in Arabic, guys, in Arabic, in the same Hadith, it says, "Waqala Abu Isa, hada hadithun hasanun Sahih." This is Hassan and Sahih, not only Sahih. Hassan, which means good, Sahih means authentic. 
But in English, it says here in the same page, da'if. Do you see it? However, we can show you from other hadith where it says it clearly, even in English, it is sahih. But the question, my friend, what kind of a prophet he wash himself with dead dogs and women blood from period? What's wrong with this guy? And as you see, people, they were asking him, why you are doing this, which means nobody do it. Don't you think that this is a crazy act? Maybe this is like a way to deliver some philosophy that water is pure, no matter the yeah. But my friend, okay, come into. But okay, hold on. Is if water is pure, then how Muhammad he says if a, if a dog he lick your dish, you have to wash it seven times. You know, okay. Because if he lick, if he lick what he, what you have inside your dish, you have let us say a soup. It's water. This is water. Nothing will make it impure. So if the water is always pure, if we if we cook pigs and pork inside the water, still the pork will not make the water impure, because this is water. Are you there, or I think you. I'm still here. All right. So if the water is always pure, that means doesn't matter we add what we add to it, correct? Okay, and what add we what we what we add to it will never change the state of the water. It's always going to be pure. So if we add pork, the water is pure. As you see here, we have dogs, we have dead dogs, not only dogs, we have dead dogs, women of blood from menstruation. Now, women of blood from menstruation is that a liquid? Is that we're going to dis dissolve inside the water? The answer yes, correct? Yeah. Okay. So here we have now dissolved is that blood. Or something like uh, just try to describe no no this is literal this is no no this is literal my friend read carefully it says in front of you it was said Allah messenger shall we use Bervida which people they throw in it menstruation rights throw in it which have in it already so the water already have a blood not only the rags because when you put the rags in the water right away whatever is in the rags is going to dissolve in the water correct Yes. Okay. So by saying that water is always pure, that means all of Islam is a lie. Because then we should not be upset from anything in the water. It doesn't matter, including the sewage. This is a sewage, actually. This is more dirty than the sewage. If I open now, if I take the water in my sink, I will not find those materials there. I will not find women blood from period. I will not find uh, uh, dead dogs. And I will not find uh, garbage. Simply, I have... I wash in my sink with, with soap, my hands. It's just soap and water. It's way more clean than what Muhammad is talking about. So how come that this is to prove that the water is always pure when it's full of germs and bacteria and blood? How come if Muhammad, he says, if a woman, she, if you if you touch a, a poopoo or a woman, you have to wash. And then now literally he is touching women and not only touching their women, he's touching their blood. How come this is not the pure, will not make you any, any pure? And he is doing that before he pray. Because what I heard from the uh, Ustad here, that this is kind of the like a parable or imagery to say something to the people you, you at see, the time. You see, my friend, if it's this is imaginary, true. that's mean, okay, this, this Muslim who says that to you, he has to prove to us that this is imaginary and this is a parable. Why they are lying? You know, here we go. It says they are giving uh, even Muhammad. He he drink from it. It says yustaqa laka. Not only he do abolition yustaqa in Arabic. It says yustaqa. No, yustaqa ilayka. Here we go. Yusqa a yastaqi mean you drink. They are giving you water to drink from, and not only he do abolition. So they are asking him why they are doing this to you. Water is brought to you. This is this is imaginary. This is imaginary now. This is not imaginary. This is water brought to you, and this water have dead dogs, women, blood from period. So the the scholar who said that to you, he is trying to escape the humiliation and the disgusting behavior of his prophet. So what he can say to you? Yes, my our prophet was a pig. He will not say that. So he have to say this is imaginary. Where it says imaginary. If you see the word imaginary, show me how we can come to such a conclusion. 
I passed by the Prophet of Allah. Read carefully. It says, I don't know if you can see the screen. I passed yes. by the Messenger of Allah. So he passed by him. And he was performing wudu. This is imaginary or is it real? That's real. Real. So he was performing wudu in the well of Bida. I said, with Bida, I mean garbage, by the way. I said, are you performing wudu from it when garbage is thrown in it? He said, water is made in, uh, 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 not made impure by anything. So he was he was there. This is not imaginary. And this is Sahih. Right? Yeah. So what, what do you think? Are you going to follow a prophet? Obviously, he has mental, mental illness. This is a sign of mental illness. Regardless if Muhammad is a false prophet or not, but this is a proof that this person has mental illness. A, per, a person who is aware, a person who is a smart, a person who have a brain, he will not. This is why people they are asking him, "Why you are doing that? Are you? Do you see the guy? What he said to him? He said to him, "Are you? Are you? You see the question mark? Performing? Yeah. So he is yeah. questioning his behavior. So the Arab, who they are Arab, and they are people like I am an Arab. You know, we used to take a shower maybe once a year. Okay." But even those Arab who take a shower once a year, they don't say, they don't do what he's doing. To the point they are questioning his madness. Are you? And then when you say water is, is not made impure, that means everything is always pure because a human being is full of water. Is it Muhammad in the Quran says, and we created everything from water? Correct? Yes. That's mean shaitan. Sorry, that's mean a human. Pigs. Pigs, uh, rats, cats, anything. Is ain't always, it always is a pure. That's mean all of Islam is a lie. I agree with you for this one. Yeah, but if you agree with me in this one, you have to agree with the rest. For now, in chapter 2, verse 173, it says, It's forbidden for you the dead meat and the blood and the flesh of the swine, but all of this is water. So how he say, Everything is made from water. Every living thing is made from water. The meat, the blood, the, the swine made from water. And how he said the water, nothing make it impure. And then he said that the blood is forbidden. The meat, that meat is forbidden. The swine is forbidden. And then he is swimming between them. Mm. Right? So what do you think? I am here to clear your doubt. I mean, if you have anything less still make, holding you to stay as a Muslim, ask me and I will help you. Otherwise, I invite you to leave Islam right now. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, you, it's you, not really. You, why it's you want, not really easy here, uh, CP. Why Sorry, is not, it's no, not really Who care easy. about easy, not easy, my friend? Is it easy to follow a, a, a crazy man? Is that easier? Is that easier to say uh, my prophet is, is, is mentally ill and is crazy man? Is that easier for you to go and pray to God who is stupid and false? Is it easier that you humiliate yourself, you bend your head every day to an idol God who does not even exist? Which one is easier? But I mean, this is also about the consequences. Well, you can deal, you can uh, deal with it. You can you can, you can deal with it. You can move. Families. You can move to a Christian area. You can you know. There's many ways. I mean, life, my friend. You see, life is not about people who they are around you. If those people around you, they will not love you for who you are. You don't want to be with them. Doesn't matter who they are. If I have a mother, she will not love me for my choice. I don't want to be with her. That means she don't love me. 
I love her, I respect her, but she, if she really care for me, she will care for my happiness. Correct? Yeah. So You're who right. who care what people say, my friend? I have many people, they, 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 they are against me, they speak against me, etc. It doesn't hurt me. For me, I do what I think is right. I don't care. We will live one life in this earth. Either we live it with the glory or we live it with humiliation, being a slave of people. Do what people want. Doing what people want will take you nowhere. You are not life. You are just like a worm. You move as they told you to, to move. You speak as they told you to speak. You say as they want you to, to say. So if you want to live like a worm, you part, you part when they say to you, part like a puppy, then this is not life. For me, I prefer to live a free. My belief is a free. My statement is a free. And I will be enjoy the freedom which God he gave me and nobody can take from me. But I want to ask you about one other question All before right. it's sitting. Okay, sure. Is that possible? Sure, sure. Go ahead. You still have a time for this. Okay. What is the question? Um, I saw some of your uh, video and it's uh, uh, discuss about some discussion about the, the miracle in the Quran and uh, I agree almost all of your point about that this is not really true. This is like a false uh, interpretation, like um, seven heaven that's uh, similar to atmosphere, something like that. Okay. But I also uh, wondering about, I forgot uh, uh, about the uh, ayat that mentioned about the river under the sea that is really uh, fine in the in uh, southern america latin america somewhere river under the sea yes hmm. so there is and a verse also on... mentioned the quran. okay quran right okay let me let me see because most of them they come with the new ideas every day uh, let me see i will search in google i never heard this before you know I will search where it says the miracle of river under the sea and we will put it in the screen. River under the sea. I found a video, but I cannot play videos, you know. Uh, Science of Miracle Quran, river. Give me a second. Sure. <clears throat> It will look like we have only <clears throat> uh, <coughs> videos. Okay, okay, here we go. I found that thing. I will put it on the screen. I found it in the video, by the way. But I, I cannot play the video, but I'm going to show people what we are talking about. And this is, again, a very clear sign of deception, how they try to fool you and how the deception work. Give me a second, please. All right, this is the video. It says, river under the sea of Mexico, miracles of the Holy Quran, correct? You see it? Yeah. All right, but, but look what they are quoting for us. It's quoting for us, chapter 25, verse number 53. Okay, but just to show you how we stupid the statement. In Arabic it says, there is two seas, but they just say the river under the sea in the title, correct? Okay, so how in the Quran says two seas? If it's, it's, if it's a river, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a river. Secondly, the verse in the Quran says that those two seas, they never met. So there are two seas, not one. They are not a river and a sea. They are two seas. Let us go to the Quran. I will copy the verse as it is from their uh, description. 
and I will go to the Quran in front of your eyes, and everybody will be laughing in a second. I will post what is written in their description. Here we go, chapter oh, yeah. 25, I, verse I number 53. Arab either to read Arabic. My friend, my friend. To be honest. My, my friend. Yeah, they can lie to, you, lie to you, no problem, but I'm here to help you, no problem. See, this is a translation. Yusuf Ali says two bodies of water. That's a lie. It doesn't say two bodies of water. Change the translator. You will see it says two seas. You see it? Here we go. This is Muhammad Khan and Hilali. What the translation is saying? It is he who let free the two seas. They put with two brackets, two, bracket, two kinds of water, but it says seas in Arabic, Bahrain. And it says that those two seas, they have a barrier, complete partition between them, which means they don't pass. So the river they are talking about is just a spring of water going inside the ocean, correct? Yeah. Okay, but this is not what it says here. Here it says they will never, never pass. Not only that, in Arabic it says, وَحِجُرًا مَحْجُورًا بَرْزَخًا وَحِجُرًا مَحْجُورًا If we go right now in the front of your eyes to Ibn Kathir, what we will find? Let us do that. Is Ibn Kathir will take, will take my side? No. Is Ibn Kathir is a Christian? But actually, by the way, Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, all of it is to defend Islam, not to explain the Quran. He's a liar like them. So, chapter 25, verse number 53, we go to Ibn Kathir. Let's do it. In the front of your eyes, here we go. And then you will, not, you will see right away that this is a fraud, another fraud. All of Islam is a fraud. Okay, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir explanation. Read carefully, please. I don't know if the text is clear. It is he who let free the two seas. One is portable and sweet, and the other one is salty. Means, he created two kinds of water, sweet and salty. The sweet water is like that in the rivers. Spring and wells. In Arabic it says seas, but Ibn Kathir is saying it's like those who they are in the river. Like those in the river, not they are. Which is a fresh, sweet, potable water. And this was the view of Ibn Juraj. And then he says, Meaning there is without a doubt, no, for no nowhere, in the creation, there is a sea, which is a fresh and salty water. So they are trying to answer how the Quran says two seas. They are saying, we cannot find anywhere salt water sea. And we can find salt water sea, but we cannot find salt, uh, a fresh water sea. So maybe Allah speaking about the river. Let us go. Let us continue. And then he says, he explained how they are not mixed, he said. And he has set a barrier, a complete partition between them. Complete. They don't mix. Meaning between the salty water and the sweet, the sweet water, it doesn't matter what they're now the sweet water. Muslims they are trying to figure out how the how the sweet water became sea. They say maybe he meant the rivers, maybe he meant the lakes. Barzakhan. Barzakhan mean a partition which is a dry land. Do you see it? Do you see a dry land? But the complete the, partition between them yes they don't mix that's it there's a because there's land between them barzakh is a land a dry land it's not only a land it have to be dry so all the miracle claim is a lie because they, they, he used the word barzakh there the word barzakh is a piece of land which is higher than the water let us say you have water in the right and water in the in the left what is between them they call it barzakh you know what i mean but Barza is the, it's the land when we are go after we are die, right? Exactly, because it's a road too. It's a, it's a land. It's a dry land where you go over it. Barzakh is a physical object. And not only that, it says, وَحِجَرًا مَحْجُورًا It is complete partition. I mean, barrier to prevent one of the other to mix together. Do you see it? So, it's a dry land and it's a complete barrier. They will never mix, but this is not what happened in the river, which is under the sea. The river go inside the sea because there's a current. In that location, there's a fresh water. But after a mile or two, the water is changed. It's going to be mixed. This is why we call something called delta, correct? You know, you know what delta is? Yes, I know. 
Okay, delta is a mix simply between the fresh water and salt water. They mix. So scientifically, they are lying because fresh water and salt water, they mix. All the delta in the world is a fresh and salty water. Secondly, you can go right now to the kitchen, get a cup, mix salt with it, another cup, have a fresh water in it, put them together, let's see if they mix. <laughs> Number three, the verse in the Quran says there is a partition of a dry land. And the Quran claimed that they will never meet. What, what, what Allah he is saying now, that he created for you fresh water and this fresh water never mixed with the salty water. When this is absolutely wrong, because the fresh water we have is coming from the sea. You know how the, how the cycle of rain, right? Yeah. Okay, so why their Islamic scholars, Islamic books saying they never met, it's a dry land, but in their videos they are saying something different. Can they support what they say? They cannot. Can they show us where it says that? They cannot. I'm not using a Christian like book to read for you. We can read a Jalalain, we can read all the scholars, you will see all of them, they agree, that's what it says. What do you think? <clears throat> That's clear now. I just get confused when I when I heard about these these verses. Well, you know, th this is the point of those verses is just to uh, deceive you and make you believe in something not true, not exist. And you know, the Quran, uh, this verse itself is a reason for people to leave Islam. You see, in chapter twenty-seven, verse number sixty-one, look what it says, and this is the Muslim translation. Or he who has made the earth firm to live in. The fact is not really, it doesn't say uh, firm, but I will go with it. And he made the rivers in the midst. And he set there in mountains. Uh, and those mountains, they are firmly fixed. And he made separating bar between the two seas. They say in the translation here, two bodies of flowing water. Do you see he, he put separating bar? Do you see it? Yes, Okay. A separating bar. Okay. What is that bar? If you go and read the interpretation for the, this is a different verse. You will see the bar is a dry land again. <laughs> it says bar. So they are not touching each other. They are not touching each other. And they are not I two bodies of water. The translation here is a lie. It says two seas. You see, never trust a Muslim translation. Yusuf Ali is a bad translation. If you go to different translation, let us see. It is two seas. And Allah, he put a bar between them. So they will never meet. And he placed a partition between the two seas. Do you see it? We just changed the translator. What happened? Is that a new book? It sounds like a new book now. If you go and read the interpretation for this verse, you will see the same. Let us try. Chapter 27, verse number 61. Let me open different interpretations. So most of them, they will not say, oh, he is using just Ibn Kathir. Suddenly, they don't want Ibn Kathir. No problem. We will go to different uh, uh, verse in the Quran and we will love. 2761 is there also similar uh, interpretation by the Indonesian scholar on this uh, similar to who to uh, Ibn Kathir <clears throat> um, yeah when they are uh, translating the, the yeah. hadith okay all right read carefully this is Tafsir al Jalalain. This is the website of the Kingdom of, of Jordan. It says here, He made the earth in a body stability that does not consciously shake beneath of you and under your feet for the inhabitants. And he made rivers and uh, to flow throughout. And he set mountains for it, which is has fixed on earth. This is a mistake too, because mountains are not placed on the earth, they are part of the earth. And he set a barrier between the two seas between the sweet one and the salty one. Do you see it? 
one and the one not mixing with the other they never mix that's it there's a barrier do you see it okay this is now yeah, I see. this is now a jalalain okay forget about jalalain maybe a jalalain is stupid let's go to ibn abbas <laughs> all right he says he has set a barrier preventing mixture between the two seas do you see it preventing but in science those river they mix they mix every second yeah if you go if you go yeah. you live in indonesia go with you five take with you in the in the boat five gallon not in the boat let's say in the beach take with you five gallon of water fresh water throw it in the water just between your legs and try to grab the fresh water back you will not find the fresh water you will find salty water correct you hear me i think he is suffering from bad connection but do you see guys how they lie to you in order to fool you make you believe this is, this is not only not science this is a mistake the god of the quran he think that the the, the he made a miracle the, the salty water and fresh water are not mixed they are two seas so what do you think if you go now my friend if you go to the, the beach in indonesia and you take with you a big truck full of water fresh water and you dump it in the ocean and then you bring a cup of water and right away after you dump the water right away not after 10, 10 hours put a cup in the water to drink from the fresh water which you just dumped you will not find it it's gone it's mixed are you there you have a bad connection i think But here you see an example how important our videos is. If not, this person and you and him and she and he, they will still believe that this is really true a miracle for the deception is the game. The whole point is how we can deceive you, not how, how we can share the truth with you. This is why it's very important to show those videos to your children so they will not lie to them and fool them. Are you there, my friend, or you hang up? Hello? I think we lost him. <laughs> Hello? Ah, we are losing him. The devil, he tried not to make him leave Islam. Yeah, it looked like they don't want him to leave Islam, huh? Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, so you did... can hear me? Yeah, I did. I do. Yeah, sorry, uh, my connection is suddenly. Cut here. No problem. But do you see how we prove that everything they are saying is a lie? The question is, yeah. if Islam is a good religion, why the followers of Islam, they lie to make you believe in something which is a lie? If this is a good religion from God, why we do the act of the devil to make you believe in the true God, if Allah is a true God? You know what I mean? Yes. So what do you think, my friend? This is, you said, this is the only one stopping you from leaving Islam. Aren't you going to leave Islam? What do you mean how? Just say I am out of Islam. This is garbage. That's it. Muhammad is a false prophet. Just say it. This is easy. Say I don't believe in Islam no more. I'm out. Very easy. You want to believe in a God. He, he teach you that there's two water seas. One is a fresh and one is salty and never mixed. 
Do you want to believe in God who says that sperm became a congealed blood? You want to believe in God who says that the one who has orgasm first, the baby will look like him? A God who says that sperm coming from the chest of the woman and the sperm of the man coming from the backbone? <laughs> and the hail is coming from mountains in heaven? So what, you know, this is, this is an insult to you to stay believing in it. It's an insult for our brain. It's an insult to me to follow a stupid person like Muhammad. So I don't know if you heard me how many times I say, if, if, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Not how foolish, I say how fool, because this is not only act of foolishness, this is mean you are fool all the way to your bones. So I invite you, my friend, to, to, to denounce Islam right now, as we speak. Um, yeah. Y yeah, what? I, I agree with you. You agree with me what? That this is, yeah, that this is uh, mostly that some of the topic that you uh, expose in this uh, discussion. It's, it's uh, what you say is true and I agree with you. So are you out of Islam? All right, that's wonderful. He's out of Islam. That's the that's the that that's the first step. I'm so happy for you. So now you agree with me that Muhammad is a false and he is a fraud. That's wonderful. Now, what do you think about accepting Christianity, accepting Christ as your savior, as long as you decide to leave Islam? I. How I wanna start about this? Uh, I heard about uh, some story about about him, about uh, Jesus, mm. uh, from my friends. A lot of my friends is uh, Christian, okay. and they are a good Christian. Uh, go to the church every week, and then I also uh, watching a video from 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 uh, several ex-Muslim that already convert to Christian and they call they are a good Murtadin here hmm. then um, that's how I uh, wonder and try to call you tonight all right try to so how I can help you to to uh, to accept the Messiah if there is any anything you need to clear out in your mind to, to accept the Messiah as your Savior how I can help you because you know it's not enough for us to say Muhammad is a devilish man following the devil. It's important too to find the salvation. And for me as a Christian, I'm inviting you to believe in Christ for he is the best I can invite you to. I have no one better. I am no one. Nobody is good, only God. And the only good God is the Messiah. So what is now the reason for you not to say I accept the Messiah? You are. You said you are. You watch videos of uh, Christians who they are ex-Muslims who became a Christians. You have a friends who they are Christians who go to the church. What is the point which is not making you until now? What is stopping you? Because uh, the main reason is uh, when you. Uh, sorry, my my English is very awful. Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. uh, when uh, when I uh, talk to you about the consequences here hmm. it's not easy and then even some of the what we call it murtadi they hmm. also persecute and go to the jail for uh, some reason um yeah you can my friend for, but, but, for yeah, now for now but, you can you wait, can you can become a christian and don't tell everybody until you move to different place find a job in different place between Christians, live there, and that's it. There's many areas in but the. You in, won't in, post in, my name in the in the in the channel, right? No, 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 no. But we are live. You know, understand, right? You know, we are live, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knows your name, and nobody. No, I never share information about anyone. Is that also a need to really choose uh, whether? 
Catholic or Protestant or in Christianity, in, in Christianity, my friend, there is nothing. It's called Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Christianity is Jesus Christ only. Those are just name of churches. All of them for me, they are Christian churches. I don't care what the name of the church is. However, you believe and you should believe in Christ, not in a priest. Priest is a man like me and you. He can be good. He can be bad. He can be a fraud like Muhammad. So we are not following a priest. We don't follow a man. We don't follow a name. We don't follow a title. We follow Christ. So for you, what is important is to believe and to accept Christ as Savior, not a priest as Savior. A priest cannot save himself. So you accept the Messiah and you can choose a church of your choice from your friends who they are Christians, true Christian, believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the crucifixion of Jesus and his coming back. And he is the only Savior. Any churches believe in this, they are good to me to go to and you can do go there. And when it's time, you can go and do baptism, and you will be Christian. And by accepting Christ right away, actually, you are a Christian, but the baptism is to spawn, you know, to, so the Holy Spirit will bless you and bless your life. So I invite you right now to accept the Messiah if you are convinced in your heart that the Messiah is your Savior, and the Messiah is the one we can trust. If you agree with me in that, then the rest is not important. There's nothing is called, you know, Christ never says Catholic, Protestant. This is just a, you know, happening through history, uh, a politics, uh, uh, argument. However, all of us, we are good fruits of the good God. It's like having a table, and the table is so beautiful to the point we have all kinds of fruits. So Christians, we are fruits. All of us, we are delicious. We have maybe different color. Some of us are African. Some of us, we are Asian. Some of us, we are white. Some of us, we are, it doesn't matter. All of us, we are the fruit of the Lord. And all of us, we are his beloved children. So names, color, ethnic, all those things are not important. The Bible actually say clearly <clears throat> that there is no no different between us as a Christians. No different between us as ethnic. No different between us as color, as languages. The different only is with our fruits. From their fruits, you shall know them. You are Asian, you are Indonesian, you are Filipino, you are white, you are black, you are a child of God, and the rest is not important. Is it what Jesus said? Yes, this is what Jesus said. This is what the Bible teach. Jesus said, from their fruit you shall know them. I have a verse in front of you in the screen. I don't know if you can see it. It says there is neither Jew uh, nor just, Greek. Uh, I just uh, turned off my uh, yeah. computer because in, I'm in Galatian, uh, in Galatian chapter God. three. It says there is no neither Jews nor nor a Greek. There is no neither bond or free. Even if you are a slave, and I'm a free man, or or the opposite, still we are equal in the front of God because the one who slave us is the man, not God. The one who make you free, the one who made me slave, is not God. That's the man. So. All of all of those, no male, no female, even in Christianity, make the women, the male and the female, are the same for God. Nor male, nor female, for all of you is one in Christ Jesus. So Christ, He make us here as a family, and you make you as my brother in Christ. Even though you are coming from different country, you speak different language, you eat maybe different food, you have different name, but that will not change anything. That you are still a child of God, and the Lord He love you. The Lord, he said, for God, he loved the whole world. He sent his only begotten son. So when the Lord, he says he loved all the world, that's mean he loved Indonesia. He loved Bangladesh. He loved India. He loved everybody, not only Middle East and Israel. And he loved everybody. So I invite you, my friend, to accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your Savior. For time can go fast and your soul can be taken from you any second and you lose your salvation. Leaving the cult of Islam is not enough. 
Salvation only happens by accepting the Messiah. So, it's not really matter which one church that I need to go. My friend, what, what matter in the time of Christ, the simple question is, what, what church was exist in the time of Christ? None of those. So church is, is, is us. The church is us. The church is not a building. The church is not something called Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. The church is us. And the Messiah said, whoever believe in me and I will live. Not whoever believe in a priest or a pope or a, or a Catholic or a Protestant. Whoever believe in me. Those are three schools. Each one of them, he says, we are right. However, the three of them, they agree that salvation happened only by the Messiah. The three of them agree that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is one God. The three of them agree the crucifixion and the coming back of Jesus. And the differences between them make no difference. That's why I say to you, it makes no difference what the church I go to. Because the difference between them have nothing to do with really with the essence of God. The, 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 who is God? All of them agree that the Messiah is the Lord. He is the Savior. So don't focus on those names. Focus on Christ, my friend. Focus in Christ. Accept the Christ. I'm not asking you to accept Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox. I'm asking you to accept Christ as Savior. For those names don't save. Those are just names. All of them, they need a Savior, which is Jesus. So all of them, in order to be saved, they have to believe in Jesus. And this is what they do. So if I am a Catholic or a Protestant or Orthodox, I have to believe in Jesus anyway as my Savior to be saved. So what difference makes? That doesn't make any difference. Focus in the important, which is accepting the Messiah as your Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, what? Do you accept? I want you to say a full sentence. Do you accept the Messiah as your Savior? Yeah. I, I accept him. I mean to that. I mean to that. I am so happy for you. I hear some crying there. That's wonderful, my friend. Let your tears wash your heart, wash your eyes, wash your soul, and may the Lord bless you. And today, there is a happiness in the kingdom of the Lord, for he said in the Bible that a happiness will be in the kingdom of God, for one soul is saved. This is how much you are priceless for him. This is how much he loves you. And today, my friend, you have a new life. And don't worry about your tears. Those are good tears. Those are nice tears. Those are beautiful tears, for they are going to wash your sin, Today, you have a new life and you started a new journey. You are a new person. You are reborn again with the Christ. This is what Jesus said. You cannot go to heaven unless you are reborn again. How you can be reborn again? By accepting the Messiah, believing in him as Savior, as your Lord, as your Master, as your teacher, as your prophet, as God. That is the Messiah, the Holy One. So you have a blessing in your life and I pray and I want all people who they are here to pray for you, that today, not only you, many of your family will come to Jesus. And maybe the Lord will use you as a light in your own house. So you will be the candle which is light in darkness. What do you like to say if you can talk? For now, I think I uh, I'm not really have a brave to talk with my family. I'm still stay with them. And right now I'm in a backyard. I didn't want them to uh, hurt this uh, conversation. Yeah. So maybe it's a, uh, it's a uh, hard for them to accept the same way that I decide to take right now. I understand. Um, no, I'm just praying for them. I'm praying for them. Don't. I'm not asking you to go and talk to them right now. No, don't. I'm saying I pray and God, he will help you. God will help you. You know, things will happen in time. Things will happen when it's time. So don't worry about it. And I understand. Actually, I heard you going out of your room, uh, closing doors because you don't want them to hear you. And I understand very well. Do you want to say anything for those? Look how many people now they are happy for you. Look how many people in the chat. I don't know. You can't you can see the chat sadly. Maybe later you can see it. You will see how many people they are praying for you. They are so happy for you. And uh, if you are in, in, in person with them, each one of them will give you a hug. Welcome to the family, my friend. Now you are joining the family of Christ. You are a member of a, a family 
which is a family of love, not a family of takbir and kill them. A family of love. Pray for those who curse you, those who persecute you. You have the biggest loving family ever you can imagine. A family who pray for peace, pray for prosperity, even for those who hate us. We pray for the Muslims to have a good life, to have a good health. We pray for them to see the light of Christ. We love the Muslims and we will never hate them. We love your family, my friend. They are Muslims. We love them. The same as we loved you five minutes ago before you became a Christian. We are now still we love you. And now we not only we love you, we are happy for you because you are saved. So before you've been beloved because you are God child. But now you are saved. So now the Lord himself, he will shade his glory on you. When you told me that I'm safe and uh, my sin already forgive, is it also my previous, in my previous um, my religion? Friend. I mean, yeah. Islam. Because yeah. You see, the Lord, he said, whoever believe in me and die will live. It's not me who says your sin is forgiven. The Lord, he said, whoever believe in me and die will live, which means your death is temporary. Your sin is, is, is washed by you repenting and believing. So not only by believing, but you believe and you repent, which means you will never do that again. Sin we practice is not going to be part of our life. And we believe in the Messiah that is going to save us. The only one can cleanse you from your sin is the Lord, not me. I am no one. I am nobody. So when I say to you, I say to you the good news which the Messiah he gave us. Whoever believe in me. So you believe in him and you are doing his command for he said not everyone says to me god god will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so from now on you are a person who pray to the messiah you worship the messiah and you ask for forgiveness from the messiah you don't ask it from no man no false god no false deity and your fruit should be a fruit of a christian loving giving be a wonderful person from their fruits you shall know them so you believe in the messiah and then because you believe your fruits will be wonderful the nature of this tree will change your fruit will be different fruit of law so the second you believe and the second you believe from your heart not hypocrisy not saying shahada like muslims they do believing from your heart you are saved so your sin in the past is there but god he is the one who can forgive your sin and yes he said he said the one who believe in me and I will live, which means you are welcome in his kingdom and your sin is gone. Thank you. And my friend, I have a gift for you. Thank you, Sophie. You're welcome. I have a gift to you. I will take advantage to, to announce today that soon I'm going to publish my book, the Indonesian translation for deception of Allah. And it's going to be in your honor. All right. Where I need to buy it? No, no, no. It's going to be for free. It's going to be published very soon. And I'm taking advantage of having you today. May the Lord bless you and your family. And we will publish the book very soon in the internet for free. Deception of Allah translated to the Indonesian language. All right. For free for yeah. all Indonesian because we love Indonesian. You see, for me, I'm not a rich man. I am not. I am no, no rich in any mean, but uh, I am rich with many things. The Lord, he is the, the one who enrich us. He is who, the one provider. So all of us, we need we need to have income, right? But it's more important for me from selling a book is to bring people to Christ and the 300 million Indonesian, they are waiting for such a book. So I will give it as a gift for all the Indonesian who speak the language for free. And now we will have two books, Quran and Science in Depth, and deception of Allah, both of them, they are going to be Indonesian. They are already Quran and science is published. So I want to say thank you, my friend. Do you want to say anything for those people that are here? Um, thank you uh, for all of you. Um, and sometimes I not really know about what I want to say in uh, English, CP. Uh, is that possible to say in Indonesian? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that would be actually more lovely. 
Why not? Um, terima kasih teman-teman dari yang dibilang oleh CP bahwa kalian semua mendoakan yang seperti ini menjadi hal yang baik karena sebelumnya aku tidak tahu bahwa banyak hal yang ternyata salah di dalam Quran hanya coba pelan-pelan mempelajarinya dan malam ini setelah berusaha untuk mencari tahu sendiri dengan diskusi dengan CP ternyata semua yang dikatakan itu benar dan sepertinya memang selama ini telah banyak telah banyak kesalahan mungkin yang saya lakukan terima kasih teman-teman untuk mendoakan saya harap semua yang terbaik untuk kita semua thank you CP you welcome my friend may the Lord bless you and if you have any question let me know in the future sure and if you, you want your family to talk Bye -bye. to me I will be happy to talk to them too all right yeah all right take care my friend sure Take care. God bless. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. I'm really happy for you. And we pray that the Lord He will open more eyes to see. Uh, Somebody is giving me an advice, okay. I don't know, maybe this is about this. Yeah, you know, uh, if you have, if you are in Indonesia and you know somebody, he is a good person, from ex-Muslims who is well well known in Indonesia to follow up with him, you can post in the chat and he is going to watch and see. Yeah, advice about what churches to go to, uh, people who they are in Indonesia who left Islam already, etc. I'm sure he can find his way. And uh, you know, the good thing, Indonesian Christians are not a small number. They are not really. There is big, huge territories. There is nothing there but the Christians. So he still he can go, move, uh, have a good life there. Uh, I don't know if he's single or married. He can marry, have a, a family, and live his, you know, his life in a free way, uh, the way as the Lord he wanted him to be. And you do not need to be uh, with with people who would reject you or hate you for you choose Christ. You know, you see, life is bigger than just a small tiny room. Have a bunch of people I'm born with. Because my brother is not just someone. He is born from my mother. It might be someone. He is a stranger, but he is better for me. Yes, Hamza. Yes, I've got a question for you. Well, right away you have a question? You don't want to see anything? Right away you have a question, Hamza. But you, you called me a second ago, you said you have a question for me, I answered you, and you hang up. Okay, I have a question. Can I, can I, can I ask, please? But are you going to hang up as the same as you did before? Why you hang up before? What, how come when we show you the answer for your question, you no, hang no, up? No, last time, last time. Yeah? No. No, no, listen, listen, listen. I just want you. Hmm. I just want you to read for me Isaiah seven twenty. What about Isaiah seven twenty? Isaiah seven twenty. Just read it for me. Okay, you read it for me. Go ahead. Just, just read it for me. No, I don't know. No, you tell me what the question, my friend. Don't, don't. I don't like you know. Tell me what yeah, do you want. What do you want? Isaiah seven twenty. Okay, what do you want to say? Go ahead. Huh? Tell me what do you want to say. Go ahead. You want me? You said you have a question. No, no, no. I'm listening. Say, what is the question, my friend? Say, says that the Lord will shave uh, that the Lord will take a rain and shave people put private parts. I want to know about that. But, this, but did you read the ch chapter where it says this is about who? Which Lord? I want you which Lord? I which just Lord? want you to read on which, the screen. Which Lord? Which Lord? For the, me, the screen. My friend, okay. okay, okay. okay. No, no problem. But it's, it's but it's saying there. This is about the king of Syria. This, this is about the king. This is about the king of Syria. So you see, you see, yeah, yeah. You see, okay, 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 okay. okay. Did, did you try? Listen, listen. Did you try to read the interpretation? Did you ask me? Did you ask me a question? Did you ask me the question or not? Did you ask me the question or not? Okay. Did you ask me? Hold on. Did you ask me the question? Did you ask me the question and you want me to answer or you want to answer it? Who is going to answer it? Who's going to answer it? You or me? 
Who is going to answer it? You or me? Answer that. Okay. I'm asking you. Did you read the interpretation for the verse? Answer that. I'm asking you. Did you read the interpretation yes. for the verse? What and what the interpretation say? You read it for me. I don't know. You no, 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 no. You said you said everybody heard you saying you did read you the interpretation. No, because this is a clear that you never read the interpretation and you are lying saying you did read and the interpretation. You, I am asking you, I'm asking you, did you read the interpretation? You said yes. You said yes. What the interpretation says? You just keep on talking about what the interpretation says what the interpretation says. What the interpretation says. You, you Abdul, about, Abdul, about the Abdul. Okay, okay, just go. You are just a kid. Anyone can go right now, open the interpretation for the verse, and you will see this is speaking about the king of Syria, the Assyrian king. You know, when people, they speak, Muslims are like a bunch of kids. They search for things, copy, paste, but nobody want to go and read. You can go right now. There's tons of interpretation, Christian websites, and you can read. You can do the same to us, the same we do for you. Show you Ibn Kathir. Show us, our, uh, show us our Ibn Kathir, so we can laugh at you. Why you don't want to read it? So when we get you busted, we show you the interpretation which is made by your scholars. Go and read the interpretation which is made by our scholars, and everybody will laugh at you. And as long as you are talking about the Lord will shave his leg and you think this is our God, well, let me show you that your God, Allah, in the Quran, he have a leg. This is not our book. You are a stupid, you are a fool who copy-paste. If we go in your Quran, we will find that Allah, he have a shin. And Allah, according to Muhammad, is going to expose his shin. When they ask Muhammad how, how we will know his shin, just go, kid. The one who have a shin is Allah. Is Allah going to shave his shin? According to Muslims, Allah's shin is very sexy and very beautiful. Let us read together. And here you notice the hypocrisy. They didn't, they didn't know how to read our book, but they didn't know what is written in their book. So what is the problem here? The problem here is that you understand the, wrong, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the verse wrongly. And you don't want to go and read and what it says and what it's mean in the same time your god allah have a shin not our god our god is a spirit when god he came to us as a man he took a humble visible image for jesus is the visible image the humble image visible image of the invisible god if we go in the quran we will find let me show you the hadith And we will die laughing in a second. And this is, by the way, an example of how Muslims, they copy paste from website. They don't know what they are talking about, which make us laugh. The same as Didat was saying that. They copy from Didat, mostly. And we just got Didat busted in everything he said. Uh, let us see where Muhammad said you recognize him from. Uh, his shin. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the hadith. Let us see. Here we go. And then Allah, let me show you. Oh, sorry, the screen was blocked. Uh, it's my mistake. I was showing you even the interpretation for the verse. So you guys, you did not see it. Let me take this down from the screen. Give me a second, please. Who is, which Lord is the one who have a shin? That is your Lord. Read carefully, Abdul. Mr. Shin. I hope you are watching and everybody for sure is laughing at you what you said. 
This is how the Muslim expose himself. Because if you are saying, the Christian saying that their God have a shame, which is not true, it is you who have a shame. So if this is a funny, well, you are laughing at your God. Read carefully. When Allah, he come to you in a shape other than the one which people they saw first time, they will not recognize him. Then the Almighty, read carefully, Abdul. Maybe you are literate like your prophet. Then the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw first time. And he will say, I am your Lord. And they will say, you are not our Lord. So what happened here? Allah is coming to them in a shape. Do you see the word shape? Allah, he has a physical shape, literally. This is not metaphorically. And he is even coming to them in that shape, which Muslim will not recognize, which means they will reject. We will make it in a blue, in a shape other than the one they knew, other than the one which they saw first time. When you Muslim saw, saw first time the shin of Allah? Let me know if you know, please. And then he will say to them, I am your Lord. He will say what? I am Allah. They will say to him, you are not Allah. Get lost. Why? Because they don't like his shape. So maybe Allah, he came like a pig. And Muslims don't like pigs. And then Allah will come to them in a shape which they knew and they will accept him. And they say, do you know how and any any sign which you can recognize him? Him who? Allah. They will say, the shin. So this kid, he is claiming that the God of the Bible have a shin. In fact, it is in the Quran and in the Hadith. In the Quran it says, وَيَكْشِفُ عَنْ That is not in our book, my friend. You are an ignorant. You are literally an ignorant. And this is why I always really, I love when I see Muslims copying and pasting, trying thinking that they, can, they have something against us. In fact, they have something against their God. And here we go. Because of you, everybody is laughing at the God who is going to do striptease showing his shin. And how you recognize your God, Muslims? From shin? From his shin? <laughs> you know, uh, when a Muslim he speak, I find it hilarious because always he lead us to the purpose of mostly of calling me is to get in us busted and to make fun of the Bible. But look what happened. What happened is the opposite. It is him who believe in a God who have a shin. And yet he is trying to make it that we are the one who have such a thing. But this has shown us that Muslims, they have a big problem. They are not only ignorant about our book, they are ignorant about their own book. Do you see it? Anytime a Muslim he try to fool you with a verse from the Bible, go and read the interpretation for it and you will see that what they are saying is absolutely nothing but a stupid and a lie. For me, I use it as a weapon against them because what you said now, I am using it against you. If it is funny, you claim that according to you, according to your understanding, that the Lord is going to shave with a rosar that is hired. And you are saying the Lord will shave, will shave what? Read the interpretation. Everybody will be dying laughing at you. All of those are different interpretation for the same verse. And you will see none of them is speaking about what you are saying. You are just an ignorant. But I can show you from all interpretation, from all hadith, that your God Allah, he have a shaved shin and is so sexy. It's not my Lord. It's yours. So how come it is a shame that there is a God, he have a shin, and this is not our God, but it's not shame that your God have a shin, which is your God. Do you see it? And this is about talking about Allah showing himself physically. 
because as you see they ask him are we going to see Allah the question was to Muhammad are we going to see our Lord in the day of resurrection he says yeah you will see him as as easy as seeing the Sun and the moon so he compares seeing Allah to seeing the Sun and the moon and the Sun and the moon are physical object and then Allah will come to them in a shape Allah change shape and then when you say Allah will come to do it to you in a shape that's mean Allah is inside his creation because you just said a shape who is the one who created that shape one of the lies Muslims they say to us that Jesus cannot be God for the shape of a man is created by God so how God can be inside his creation but isn't it this is your God is inside the shape which is different from the other shape who is the, when where Allah got this shape from from Walmart the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw first time that's mean we have two shape of Allah the hadith here confirmed that there's two shape of Allah okay when Allah have the second shape what happened to the first shape we put it in the closet and the new shape of Allah is made by who by Taiwan or by China or by Allah and if Allah cannot go inside of the creation he is going inside that shape in which position hello ACP hey Mahdi how are you uh, doesn't it say in Arabic that Allah will come in an appearance instead of a shape okay my friend is an appearance is an image for Surah Surah is an image right yeah okay Surah your God Allah he says your, your Prophet Muhammad Allah he said that the one who make a Surah Allah will bring that Surah and it will ask you to blow in it to make it alive correct pardon the one who Surah it can it, it, it it's it's a physical shape isn't it Adam? Allah, he khalaqahu fi ahsani surah. Allah, he made him in the best uh, uh, surah. Adam is a human, right? Hey, Mahdi, are you there? Mahdi? Hello? Hello? What happened to Mary? Hello? Reconnecting. Okay, call me back when your screen is better. I mean your Skype. Call me, Mehdi. You see, Mehdi, he is trying to make an argument saying, well, it says in Arabic, surah, image. But your God, Allah, he says, this is showing, again, this is showing the ignorance of Muslims, you know. Allah, he created us as a surah. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صُوَّرْنَاكُمْ خلقناكم ثم ثم صورناكم صورة. You are a صورة. هو الذي يصوركم. So صورة is a shape. We are a صورة in, in Islam. The Quran says that the human being are a صورة. So when you say صورة, an image, this is an image which is a shape. So here you see that Mahdi, obviously he do not know his book, he do not know in the Quran. Because if he knew the Quran, he will not say what he just said. Chapter 40, verse number 46, it is him who made you in the best of uh, surah, which means image. Chapter 64, verse number 3. So surah, 
is a physical image, physical image, not a, just a picture in a print. It's like you say, four dimension image, statues, a human being. Are you there, Mahdi? And I was expecting you to call me back with the sheikh. So you get excited to see it says there surah. A surah is making it even more, more ugly. Surah is even more ugly. Because that confirmed that it's a living creature. Not a print. And we showed you the reference from the Quran. Exactly, it's a physical image. Right? Any Muslim have any comment? So when Allah, he changed his shape, he is changing his physical uh, 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 attribute. And that's mean he is inside the creation he created. Who is the, where Allah, he got this shape from? He borrow it? It's a shape. And there's, there, how it exists. So Christians and Muslims need to learn that Islam is a different religion from the belief in Christianity. For us, our God is a spirit. God, our, our Lord, when we say the Messiah, he come to us as a physical human being, right? Physically, as a human being. But this is the humble image of the glorious God. God humble himself, so he come as a man. Here we are talking about Allah as Allah. This is not Allah humbling himself. This is Allah as Allah. So Allah as Allah is a shape. And Allah, he changed his shape. It's like a jellyfish. And the second you say Allah have a shape, it's mean he's taking a physical dimension. And in order to have a physical dimension, you have to be in a physical space. If I say Allah is 30 meter by 30 meter, that's mean he is inside the space of 30 meter. We cannot put 30 meter in there is, if there is no space of 30 meter. So for Allah in order to exist, as long as he is not a spirit, he is inside the physical dimension. And as you see now, he, we confirm that Allah have a shin, Allah have a hand, Allah have a foot. So he is a physical dimension inside the physical dimension and he is nothing but inside a creation. The Muslim, they claim that Allah cannot be inside his creation. That is a contradiction for your own religion, not for us. For, for Allah cannot be inside his dimension he created. For us, our God is almighty. He can do as he wish. For you, your God is limited. He cannot be inside something, according to Muslims. And that is a reason to believe that Islam, not only stupid, the one who made the Quran an idea and the Islam as religion, is a, is a collection of a flight of thoughts and they don't match. How nothing like Allah and then Allah is a shape. Give me the shape of Allah, I can make like it. How nothing like Allah, but Allah cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. Well, I don't have a son because I don't have a girlfriend. So me and Allah, we are the same, we are single. And both of us, we have the same reason not to have children. Why? Because there's no woman. So that's mean I have the same ability as Allah. I am able to have son if I have a woman. Allah is able to have a son if he have a woman. So what is stopping Allah from having a son? Not having a woman. That's mean when you say nothing like Allah, that's a joke. Because I am like Allah now. I cannot have a son for I don't have a woman. And what make it more funny that Allah is asking Allah, how Allah can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? Have you ever heard of a stupid conversation? This is God asking himself, saying how Allah can have a son. If he's asking us, that is horrible. Because I can tell you how you can have a son without having a girlfriend. I will tell you the story of Jesus. So how the Quran speak about the story of Jesus that Mary, she have no boyfriend, she have no husband, yet she got a son. And then the same one who speak about Mary who have no boyfriend, have no husband, yet she have a son. He himself cannot have a son. Huh? And the funny, 
the Quran did not use even the word wife. He used a girlfriend. Statement of Sahiba. Huh? He could not find a better statement. He can go right now. Ask any Muslim. I'm looking for a verse actually, which is <clears throat> uh, will help us a little bit to understand the stupidity of the Quran. Okay, maybe this one will help. In the Quran, the word sahib and sahiba have many meaning. Sahib is the owner or those who accompany somebody. So it can be a human being, accompany a human being, and it can be a human being who owns something. So look at this. Inna ashaba jannah al fi shughlin fakihun. Anyone remember what we found the interpretation of this verse, what it is? That the God who is saying to us, he cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. He is the same one that is promising you to have a lot of girlfriends. And you will be doing dahman, dahman, pushing hard with your private part, non-stop. Okay, how does God can provide us with a lot of women in heaven, but yet he cannot provide himself with one because saying, if I want to have a son, I have to have a girlfriend. It's like somebody is telling me how to find, like somebody is talking to a, a, a person, let us say he is naked, teaching him how to get the clothing. Shouldn't he get the clothing first? A person who is teaching you how to grow your hair, but he is bald. So Allah is telling us, I'm going to give you a lot of women in heaven, but he cannot have a girlfriend. In different verse in the Quran, he's saying. If Allah want to take a girlfriend, he will take it from ourself. So it's possible for Allah to find a girlfriend. You are wrong, Christian Prince. If you want, he can. He can. But from what? From ourself. How Allah is one God, and then He say He will take a partner as a wife from ourself. That means Allah have a cousin, maybe. She's a woman. Allah maybe have a neighbor. She's a woman. From His kind. Allah must be a man. If you go and read the hadith, or the interpretation, you will see it says, if Allah want to take a wife, He will take it from the Hur, which is the version will give to us if we convert to Islam. But the Hur are women. So if Allah can have a wife and she is a woman, that he must, must be a man. Because in order to have sexual relationship with the women, will you have to have a private part? At least a private part of a man, not a private part of a horse. So when Allah he says, if you want to take a partner and that partner as a wife or to have a, to have a son from her, he will take it from, from ourself. Who is ourself? Right? Anyway, guys, I have many things to do today, and uh, I might be away for some time, a few days, you know. Uh, but we will keep you updated, maybe in the Quality of Life account, and maybe I will post some videos making them in my phone, because I will, I will, I have a trip I have to do, and uh, uh, I hope don't worry about me being away. I'm just doing some business. All right, and uh, I want to say thank you for all those who support what we do. And first, all thanks is to the Lord who bring the good ones to be around us. We pray that the Lord, he will provide us 
with good ones to be our friends, to be our family, to be our relatives, which are not born of our mother. We pray that the Lord, he make us big, beautiful family, full of love and support in each other. We pray that the Muslims will see the truth. We pray for their health, even if they hate us. We pray for their salvation, even if they curse us. We pray that the Muslims, they will see that Christ bring a better life, not the life of hate, it's a life of love. To the point he made us praying for you, even though I know a lot of them, they are cursing me nonstop, wishing my death nonstop. Yet, I'm not going to wish the death of anyone. I wish you life. I wish you long life. I wish you health. I wish you love and prosperity with your family. I wish you good, for God is good. For God is good. He will ask me to do good to you. God is good, and Jesus, he said, I am the good shepherd. I am the truth. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the resurrection. I am the life. If you want to have the life, come to the Lord of life, the one who the Quran described. He gave life even to the mud. If Jesus can give life to the mud, how about you? If Jesus can breathe into the mud, as the Quran says, how about you? Don't you think that Jesus, who can bring life even to a mud, he can bring life to you? We are following the living Lord. The Messiah, in a few words as definition, is the walking, talking, living word of God, God on earth, God in heaven. He is holy wherever he go. God of life, who give life, he provide life. And God of love who spread love and by him and for him everything was created with the peace of the Lord I leave you and with the peace of the Lord I wish you the best I will see you in a few days from now I will post short videos just you know I will do it maybe by my phone but don't worry about me being away I will be just doing some business thank you all May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Made by the man. For the man. Not for me. By the man. For the man. Not for me. Thank you.